Welcome to the WAN Show. We're not really going to have any hot takes or controversial moments this week because nah. I've already had enough of them for one week. <laughs> Wait, there was, what happened this week? Um, I don't want to know. Let's keep going. <laughs> there was... Project, yeah. You Project Farms has reviewed... Actually, uh, Todd was not the only one to review the LTT screwdriver, and I want to talk a little bit about what it was like being on the other side <laughs> of that kind of an engagement. Normally, I am the reviewer, but this week, I was the reviewee. It was something. Yeah. Forbes has released their top creators list. Spoiler, I'm not on it. And that's not the reason that it's one of the stupidest pieces of clickbait garbage that I have ever seen. Well, let's talk a little bit about that, shall we? 343 just can't stop screwing up Halo. What a strong start. What a weak fall. Moving on, we also have Jasco follows through. Some interesting stuff there. Yeah. Oh, man, that's uh, that's going to be a good update. And we will give it to you at some point. Later. Later. Yeah. When we do. Yeah. Yeah. The show is brought to you by Wealthfront, Pioxia. And Epidemic Sound. That's an unfortunate name, given the current state of things. It sure is. Why don't we jump right into our first topic, the headline topic of the show yeah. today. The Project Farms and other. Uh, I guess we could just say Jeff Gearling. I think those are the two, the two main ones that covered the, yep. that covered the screwdriver with reviews. Uh, so the reviews of the screwdriver. First of all, you were actually over at my house yes. while I was finishing watching the Project Farms video when it came out on Sunday morning. He was uh, he was busy, so I was let inside, and then I gave a tour of his house to my girlfriend because he was busy reading comments. Well, I was finishing watching the video as well. Like, I hadn't actually <laughs> oh, finished. really? No, like, okay. so... So I was literally there right on... T right then i okay. was i was up i was in the i was in the bathroom having not really been able to finish brushing my teeth just that happens sometimes in a state of in a state of stress and and fear and and worry and those are all like kind of the same thing but it was i was this i was this boiling crock pot of emotions yeah um it, even though it was really good, which we'll get more into, but yeah, even though... But just because I'm eight minutes into the video yeah. doesn't mean it can't get really bad. Totally. And even when you're done watching the video, there's the comments. And even when you've read a few comments, there's more you gotta comments. got to digest it a little bit. And you might need to see the replies. And it had just launched, like, right then. Mm -hmm. So there was also a lot more comments and replies coming in. And then Reddit props up. And people are talking about it on Twitter. And it's just this endless feed. I will say this. It wouldn't make me change any of my outcomes, right? Yeah. From any review that I've ever done. Goals I would, and whatnot. I would still trash the Jibo again today. <laughs> but I would certainly have a little bit more empathy for the people who poured their sweat, blood, and tears into the product, having actually lived through it. I mean, to be clear, that's something I'm already aware of. You know, like I will, I will go yeah. through a, a script review with someone, and I'll say, "Look, these are all things that we absolutely need to say." But can you find can you find a bone to throw the team that like I've spent their actual time of their life building this thing? Right? Like I have trashed a product of people that I liked and was friends with and it was never really the same afterwards and I didn't change anything moving on but it sucked yep it is what it is it is it is what you gotta it is. do what you gotta do as a reviewer but yes. like it's just it's part of the part of the environment part of the job so you know uh, so I wouldn't change anything but I, I certainly have a, a much greater understanding of what it's like to sit there and go this could make or break me it's not that I was necessarily expecting us to see a huge surge in orders, right? Like, sure, that would be nice. But, I, you know, I think that compared to a video going up on our channel where we've been teasing this thing for literally years now and saying like, yep, you're going to be able to order it. You're going to be able to order it. Boom, now you can order it. 
tsunami well, of tsunami and, of orders. And we have always, always recommended that people watch reviews yes. and that people check out review content that isn't even just us and that you should yeah. cross cross reference reviews. And we had something reviewable. Yeah. So compared to our channel, I wasn't expecting a huge surge of of orders because you guys had been waiting and waiting and waiting for this thing. You'd seen it in action. And whereas on his channel, his audience, well, unless they happen to need a ratcheting screwdriver, like they haven't been waiting for the thing, right? So we did see, we did see a little jump in orders. But what I was fearful of was mass cancellations. cancellations. Yeah. So it wasn't There's so much that I had flaw. anything to gain, but I had everything to lose but the reason that we submitted for review and i wanted to clarify this um uh, under the video though that's the wording that i used i talked about submitting the product for review and some people mistook that to mean that we had paid for it or that we had even provided a unit free of charge no the only thing that we did was we allowed todd from project farms to buy the driver ahead of online availability up until now it's only yeah. been a Jeff and Todd both yeah. bought their own Yeah, they drivers. both paid for them. Yeah. Uh, so all we did was give them a page where they could click add to cart. Um, I think, no, Jeff got a creator edition as well, right? So we, we would have comped a creator edition, but I believe he also just bought his own. I think maybe both. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I, I know he at least bought his own. Yeah, and Todd did not accept any drivers from us at, at all. So the only way in which I submitted to the review was that I facilitated them just getting their hands on, on a driver earlier rather than later. And I did so because of the respect that I have for and the value that I place in independent reviews, something that it would be pretty hypocritical of me to not value and respect. Um, and when I use the term respect, I mean it in like a, one should be respectful of a horse, for it can carry you very far and very fast and be a, a loving, faithful companion, but it can also literally f***ing crush you. <laughs> <laughs> kick your ribs back to horses through your back yeah yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> right um so i yeah I, I, I so so i submitted to the review early because i believe in the value of it even though i knew that we could still sell 60 70 100,000 screwdrivers before any reviewer could ever get their hands on because I believe in the importance of that. And after all the time I've spent telling you guys, hey, you need to wait for independent reviews, even going to the work of putting together a pop-up shop so that before we opened broad pre-orders. So everyone at the pop-up got to try it before they had to buy it. And then they were able to review it. And then everyone online got to see those reviews before they could buy it. And... In order to take it to the next level, we found the, like, I mean, Todd, uh, Jeff was one requested reviewer, but Todd was overwhelmingly the most requested lots, reviewer lots that, that yeah. people wanted to look at this screwdriver. So we went out of our way to get in touch with Todd, who actually also reached out to us. So I think uh, we, like, we were going to, and then, like, he also did. So at, we, everyone was on board, basically, um, in order to get that up there before we ever shipped a single driver. Knowing, knowing the risk, which meant that I just, I, I man, I had so much at stake. Oh, yeah. Watching that video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was a so, tense moment. I was so stressed. We were supposed to hang out all day, and he spent, oh, man, I think six. If you don't include the activity, probably like 60, 70% of it on the phone. And I think I'm being very generous. Oh, 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 not when we were on the water. I said if you don't include the oh, activity. Yeah. yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I was on my phone a fair bit, but uh, I was, man, I, I don't, I don't so remember. So was I. I'm not, I'm not throwing you under. I, I don't I'm remember the last time I had an adrenaline rush like that watching something on a screen. Yeah. Like I used to be super into sports, right? So like watching the like 2010 gold medal Olympic game. Yeah. I probably had that kind of like emotional rush, like looking at two dimensional pixels. Right. Yeah. But I, I, since then, probably not. Like yeah. I just, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was, it was mind blowing. Um, I'm I'm really glad that Todd tested the way he did. He ended up being really focused on ratchet quality, which makes a ton of sense for a ratcheting screwdriver roundup. Yeah. Uh, but I had I, mm -hmm. I wanted to be 
I wanted to provide our side of the story, obviously. So I asked Nick to send over all the materials that we were going to have on the website because Todd had his driver before the web page was formally launched. So I was like, look, he should have everything a consumer should have. Like, we don't want him to like in intentionally withhold information. That's stupid. But I was determined not to influence the review in any way. Uh, so Nick did all the communication, which was just sending, like allowing him to buy it and then sending the thing. And I was like, I am not even going to watch a video on his channel. I, I actually hadn't seen a single Project Farms video until I watched the review of our driver. Oh, yeah, I'm that's, not gonna no, that's leave, not true for me at all. <laughs> I'm not going to leave a comment. I'm not going to email the guy. I did. I had never even been introduced, not even by email, to Todd. I was like, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna preach this, the value of independent reviews, gotta do it right. Then the only thing I can do is to do nothing. <laughs> uh, but I but I so I'm I'm glad that he was really focused on the ratchet because that is something that we spent a ton of our time on, um, and I was really relieved overnight. It felt like the sentiment around this project went from, um, I would say, pa well past healthy skepticism into cynicism, um, particularly from remember, a small vocal minority. You do have to remember that yeah. you're going to remember and feel the bad comments more sure. than negative ones. But it's more than just it's more than just really negative comments. It's a lot of upvotes and a okay. lot of negative discussion like there's been there's been a ton of negativity around this around this project and there was no way for us to do right right like if we had rushed it out it would have yeah. been oh youtubers don't know what they're doing and if we took our time to do it right it's like pff, they're taking so long they don't know what they're doing right they, like they, there was they, in some people's minds there was absolutely no way for us I do to know, win i do know that a lot of people were very confused about why it took so long and then when you released the video of like, this is why it took us three years to make a screwdriver. There was quite a bit of like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So that helped, but then you also need the independent review. Yeah, so I've got the I've got the, the chart, the chart with the results. Um, it's, you know, again, I, I, I didn't want to exert any influence on this or anything. So, you know, I'm not gonna, I wasn't gonna call in and tell, you know, Todd how to, how to make a chart. Uh, this isn't quite probably the way that I would have done it. Um, so the way it works is, uh, the lower average like score here, the better. Um, yeah. yeah. So like oh. one here in side to side shaft wobble, uh, right left passes. So this is essentially like the efficiency of the of the driver. Um, ratchet back drag. Those those ones. Those are gold medals essentially. Um, hold on a minute. Uh, magnet strength is a silver medal. Uh, bit retention strength is a uh, middle of the pack. And then we're actually a dead last for rotate. Oh, no, not dead last. 12 out of 14 for rotational slop, which I'll explain a little bit later. Um, so some people did find his, his graphs confusing. But when I finally saw this, oh, man, was I ever, was I ever happy. So we came in second place overall uh, with a 3.8 average rating. So we were... Uh, on average, uh, better than fourth place, including that one twelfth place. Um, and we fell below, on average, only the $140 PB Swiss driver that notably does not have internal bit storage, um, which I thought was pretty great. <laughs> um, yeah. One of the biggest victories for me was beating the Snap-on by such a wide margin. That was, that was what we goal. set out to beat. That was the target. Uh, it's also more expensive than our driver. Um, I have a note in here that if you remove the rotational slop from the equation, we actually come out on top. So rotational slop, I'll explain. And I think... I think he explains it a bit in his video and he, like, does. he explains why it would be there considering some of the other benefits that this one has. Yeah, so it, it's a bit of a trade-off with back, uh, like back drag force. And from my point of view, so what it is, is when it's in a locked position, right? So when it's neither it ratcheting notes. one way nor the other, okay? No ratchet, so right? It's like a normal screwdriver. So you hear that? How it kind of ticks back and forth a little bit? Um, that was not a major design consideration for us. And the reason for that is that you, if you want to use a fixed shaft screwdriver, then maybe you should use a fixed shaft screwdriver from my point of view. Uh, with that said, the fact that we were so far behind the PB Swiss one, 
Uh, you know, obviously, I think that's something that we would like to take into account, at least, for a, 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 a potential screwdriver V2s at some point down the road. Personally, though, for the use case that I think a lot of people are buying this for, because there's definitely use cases where you use that middle mode more often, but with PC building, I don't really see it. Um, it never bothered me because I never touched it. Yeah, in exactly. the literal years that I used trialing this screwdriver 100%. in the lead up I never to the used it ever really. I, I suspect people do use it in other use cases. Sure. Maybe heavier stuff. I don't know. Um, but I I wouldn't improve it at a sacrifice of any other part of the driver. Now, to be clear, you know, I, I this is not Luke and I, you know, popping some copium pills before the before no. the show or anything like that. Um, the main point that I'm making is that this way of uh, ranking who has the best average of the scores is not um, a perfect way of quantifying the relative value of a whole field of products. Uh, Todd actually addresses this himself. In a, when, in a really good way, in yeah, my opinion. He shows that by just removing one result that he felt was not very important at all, uh, the rankings can change dramatically. Um, the chart also doesn't... Oh, so, so basically what... But it might matter to you. Yes, it might matter to you. So it's up to you to remove the rankings that don't matter and to focus on the things that matter. The other thing is that the chart does not reflect any subjective elements of the products. I personally would never even consider using a screwdriver without integrated bit storage. Um, licensing, Megapro's patented bit storage thing was a huge part of us even deciding to do a screwdriver at all. Because unless we had a huge improvement over the in-handle storage of my daily driver Snap-on, I wasn't going to switch away from it. So um, your mileage may vary on that. Some people really prefer to just have a, a, a case of bits. And for some use cases, that makes way more sense. Anytime I'm working around the house, like if I'm putting up some picture frames and putting up some, you know, little hangers and, you know, where I'll have a screwdriver as part of my toolbox, but, you know, I'm also going to be using my drill. I'm, I'm going to have my whole drill and screwdriver bit set. Um, but depending on what you're doing, it might not make a ton of sense. Brandon has actually uh, kitted out his LTT screwdriver with all of the same bits that are on the red camera tool. Oh, cool. You know, the one that has all the torques yeah. and all the hexes and all the Phillips and a slot that you need for camera. And he's like, this is now better in every way. I'm yeah. like, well, okay, good. Because <laughs> that was the goal. Um, so, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. oh yeah, okay. This was a thing that we jumped in and kind of said earlier. Yeah, either way, no matter, no matter how it was going to turn out, it was really cool to see our product lined up against the competition. It was kind of surreal, actually. Um, Jeff Gearling also reviewed it quite favorably, although with no definitive final chart like Project Farms. He liked the thinner shaft, uh, the bit storage, and the back force on the ratchet, um, found it on par with or better than the more expensive snap-on. Uh, he said not perfect, aside from the poor rotational slop. He felt bit retention strength was another weak performer. Um, this is me editorializing here. I consider this a subjective thing. Ours is strong enough to hold large screws and big thumb nets, like on AIO water coolers uh, for their retention brackets, for example. But it's also relatively easy to remove from the shaft. You don't necessarily want it so strong that it's kind of hard to get out. So it's always a balancing act. There are drivers that have stronger magnets, the PB Swiss. Yeah, but you were I yeah. think you were talking the other day about how you would need a thicker shaft. Yes. Which working on a computer that might be kind of annoying. Sometimes you have to pass through different yes. parts and whatnot. So like there's there's trade-offs for for benefits in almost every scenario. So And there's always going to be a, a thinner screwdriver. Like if you use a fixed shaft screwdriver, oh, yeah. uh, you might need that from time to time. Mm -hmm. Like if you have one of those heat sinks that uh, actually has holes through the fins that you have to stick a screwdriver all the way down. Yeah, even that will struggle with that. I've seen it. In, oh, this this won't be able to do it in some. I've, in I've some, even yeah. seen PCI slots where there's two layers and you have to get a screwdriver through the layer. You're just going to have to have a fixed shank screwdriver for that. Um, but what our goal was, was to make sure that this was both long enough and low profile enough that you can put on any knock to a cooler because that's probably what you should be buying anyway. <laughs> um, it's... <laughs> so there, there were there were places where we knew we were making compromises, and PB Swiss does offer a much uh, stronger magnet than ours, but they also have a thicker shaft. 
Um, another thing that I, I feel like, oh, he noted that we can't offer the same level of same day customer service that brands like Snap-on can. I think that's fair. That's a fair observation. That's one of those, that's one of those subjective or anecdotal or non, non quantitative things that is important to have as, as part of your consideration for a product, but that cannot be summarized in a, in a chart. Is that, is that mostly, this is pure ignorance on my part. Yeah. Is that same day customer service mostly just for like shops? Yeah. Okay. So you might not have that same day customer service if you're an individual. Uh, not necessarily. But maybe? I think it depends. Like one of the things with Snap-on is that for the most part, you don't buy their tools at like Walmart. Um, it's, it's like a truck system is my understanding. So I actually have a broken Snap-on product. Uh, I have a broken uh, like like ratchet. And I, ha I, I haven't, to be clear, I haven't looked into it. I'm sure it's as simple as contacting their customer support and like getting a new one shipped to me or something. But it, it's not obvious to me without like contacting them where I would go or what I would do. Like there's no truck that goes to your house for it as far as I can tell. I, yeah, I don't know. The, the trucks that will just have replacement tools like ready to go for you, those go to like mechanic shops. And the stuff. only Snap-on product that I own is an American Airlines official Snap-on screwdriver. So if I'm sure I asked for service on that, I might get some questioning Questions. looks. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to not. And it's also completely fine. And also, thank you, whoever gave that to me. Did someone just... When someone highlights a comment, does that mean they paid actual money on Twitch to say it? Hmm? Was that... No. No. Oh. It just means like they watch. Channel points, which you earn by... I don't know. Watching the stream. Oh, okay. Some Someone like highlighted their comment suggesting that I'm paying 80 employees to hype the screwdriver nobody cares about in chat. Um, no. <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah. Um, something that I feel like both Todd and Jeff actually missed is that uh, while, while Jeff commented oh, that yeah. European shipping makes this screwdriver more expensive for some people, they both, and maybe this is just like a, 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 a like a, an America centric kind of worldview kind of thing. I feel like it's just, it's something that I observe a lot with my American friends and colleagues is that they um, sort of don't consider sometimes like that the rest of the world Some is things aren't American really product. different. Yeah. Um, so not only is ours more expensive in Europe, but the PB Swiss, for example, in Switzerland is a domestic product Notably cheaper. and actually relatively affordable. Yeah. So neither of them, I think really did a, a great job of covering the, the nuance of, uh, of pricing. And that's one of the reasons that we actually rarely discuss pricing in our reviews. In situations where the price is a major, major point of contention, like we saw during the recent uh, GPU pricing madness. Yeah, or if we're doing specifically a price performance chart, something sure. like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, other than that, we go out of our way not to talk about pricing that much because from my point of view, it's dynamic. It changes over time. It changes region by region. So what's the point if I do a CPU roundup of me laying out the prices and really spending a ton of my time focusing on that, if ultimately it's going to be down to you to go check what the prices are relative to each other anyway and do that calculation on your own. Now, in a perfect world, labs would be able to dynamically generate that data for you. But that's not something that we can do baked into a chart in a video. So not really much we can do about it. Uh, yeah. He noted that the plastic grip is more slippery than rubber when trying to do any high torque work like screwing into wood, but noted that it is still usable. Um, liked that the cap on the bit storage could free spin so he can push down with his palm while spinning the driver. Um, I have also, however, seen some people not like that the cap free spins. I like that it free spins, yep. but this also comes back to different use case things. Yes. I find with a computer, the free spin is going to be awesome. Yes. And with a computer, the grip is not an issue. But then, yeah. Yeah, the free spin thing I think is also um, kind of a, 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 an artifact of Jeff being a fixed shank screwdriver guy. Um, oh yeah, with a ratcheting driver, you really want that free spin. You go way faster. Well, no, no, he liked the free spin. Actually, if anything, I would say with a fixed shank driver, you need the free spin more oh, yeah. than with a ratcheting one. Yeah, that's probably fair because it, it, it spins on this end, not this end. Yeah, but we. I mean, it's Mega Pro's design, but we liked it because it does offer that flexibility. But... I still free spin with a ratchet if it's really loose. Do you really? And then I ratchet once it gets in there. Oh. 
Have you daily driven this yet? No. Okay, it's less necessary with this one because okay. the ratchet back force is so yeah, low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, my response to the rubber overgrip bit is that they do add grip, but they also tend to get gross over time. Uh, one of the reasons I left Probably my snap fair. on so much is that it's hard plastic and just never got like dirty or gross. Uh, there's people who won't prefer that though. Now, one thing, this is really important. One thing that some folks mentioned was the inconsistencies between Todd's and Jeff's results. And uh, I saw I saw some mm, kind of sus uh, comments about it. I'm gonna put that to rest for you. All right, we've bought enough competing products in the screwdriver category and made enough of our own that we have plenty of firsthand experience with the kind of variation that you might see from batch to batch or even from one driver to the next. And um, it's pretty it's pretty high. And on some of the brands, it's really high. Um, Ours, no, that is not our goal. <laughs> that is something that we're paying very close attention to. But we have seen some extreme variance in some of the brands. Um, so if you got your tinfoil hat on that one of them was faking results or that we paid them off or whatever else, um, I think you might want to take off the hat, go touch some grass. That's that's not what went down. Yeah. Um, you know what? Maybe we'll do the messenger bag discussion later. We've had a lot of requests for a messenger bag. And I wanted to, as someone who doesn't really use a messenger bag, I wanted to get some feedback from the community on it, but we can, we can talk about that later. What do you want to talk about next, Luke? Um, let's see here. I, I'm kind of itching to get in on this 343 thing because I'm honestly just annoyed. Sure, let's do it. Okay, 343 keeps screwing up Halo Infinite and it cancels split screen co-op. <sighs> I was so excited when Halo Infinite launches. He knows that. A bunch of my other really friends know excited. that. Really excited. Like, like I was this amped. tier. This yeah. tier excited. I The second I loaded in, I see the, the, the launch here. screen. The music looks fantastic. The yep. launch screen looks great. You jump into a game, uh, hopefully really quickly, or you have mic general Microsoft multiplayer problems and it doesn't work. But you eventually get into a game and it's fun and it's cool. And you're like, okay, well... This is really, 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 really noticeably missing co-op and forge because just jumping into playlists, I think is what they call them, to play like, oh, I'm just going to play deathmatch 47 times in a row is not actually super entertaining. And one of the best things about Halo has kind of always been the custom maps and being able to do things you want. I really want to be able to play Blood Gulch. Not being able to play Blood Gulch makes my soul sad. I don't really care too much which version of Halo it is. I just want to be in Blood Gulch and then I'll be happy. <laughs> um, so not being able to, I, I am certain one of the first things someone does with Forge is going to be just make Blood Gulch. Um, so that'll be nice. But first of all, okay, they cancel split screen co-op. Why does that matter so much? A lot of you probably are never going to play split screen co-op. Yep. It matters because some of us would, okay? And because they said <laughs> that they were going to have it. Um, they said after Halo, it was noticeably missing from Halo 5. Yeah. And they said after it was missing from Halo 5 that they would include it in Halo Infinite moving forward. Um, there is, hilariously enough, apparently a glitch that allows local co-op to work on, at the very least, Xbox Series S, or X, sorry, um, but they're not going to officially support it. So that's frustrating. Now, we're looking at the roadmap. Oh boy. Screen? Sure. Yeah, it's on the dock, but yep. that's fine. Um, the roadmap is going from November. Okay, the first section of the roadmap goes from November 9th or November 8th to March 7th. I tripped on my words so much there because damn, that's a big gap. <laughs> Holy crap. And then, okay, it also goes from March 7th to June 27th. So everything that you're seeing on here is like almost a year. Whoa. Yeah. One of the things that's in the second gap, so yeah. after March 7th, potentially as far as June 27th, if there isn't another delay, is the custom game browser. RIP, dude. That sucks. Remember when that used to be like the most basic multiplayer feature? Yeah. Custom game browser? Yeah. yeah. Speaking of the most basic feature, have you read this list? There's mission replay. I had to Google because I haven't played the co campaign yet because I'm waiting to be able to play co-op because it's Halo. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had that same reaction. I had to look it up. You can't replay missions! 
<laughs> and you're that, not getting it <laughs> how is for that like even a while. possible? I don't know. And you could be like, oh, it's hard to replay missions in, in open world games. No, it's not. No, it isn't. There's tons of open world games. Lots of them have mission replay. Figure it out. My goodness. Oh, c- coming sometime from November 8th to March 7th is free 30 tier battle. No one cares. <laughs> Fix your game. Quality of life improvements sound pretty good. Yeah, we need some of those. <laughs> oh, no. I have oh, not no. been interested in launching Halo Infinite in a while. And it was yeah. like the only shooter game I played that for was, a while. That was like the. I was like yeah. gaming every other night, yeah. playing Halo Infinite. Like the that's, multiplayer was fun. That's a rare Pikachu. You don't see that too often. But like, my goodness. Okay, we, we oh, jump no. far into the. Dinky the... Dolphin says, just abandon Halo like the devs did. No. Oh, oh, too Rough. soon. Rough. Too um, soon. March 7th to June 27th it includes in game reporting. Cool. That probably should have been on launch. Yeah. So much of this stuff, like ability to mission replay, okay, yep, should have been on launch. Luke... Co op should have been on launch. Forge should have been on launch. Tell me something. Tell me something, this Mr. Lefrenier. For so long. Okay, you're you you actually work managing a development team. Is that okay. is that correct? Correct. Okay. I feel like I'm testifying. Yeah, you have so you have some developers who report to you. You yep. you you task them with new things to do. Mm-hmm. They they tell you when they're done, and you find more work for them to do and help help to keep projects on track. Is that would you say that that is correct? Sounds about right. Okay, uh, that, that would be Google, yes, sir. We'll talk about that. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So <laughs> yes, Luke, your honor. In your... <laughs> okay, we can drop that now. Um, so, in your humble opinion, yeah. okay, this this one feature here in particular, in-game reporting. In-game reporting. Now, th- my understanding of a feature <laughs> like this is that it's probably like a cheat. I, 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 like a like a yeah, cheat, or, or, okay. or it's swearing or bad language. So tell or, me this. Tell me yeah. this. In your humble opinion, the complexity of implementing a feature such as this, knowing knowing the amount of metadata and telemetry data that a modern game engine is generating and crapping out, yeah, the complexity of creating at least a minimum viable product version of this, would you describe it as extremely high? Somewhat high, moderate, somewhat low, or extremely low? I'm going to give a really annoying answer. It sort of depends on what's there. You suck. It sort of depends on what's there. What you suspect is probably there, though. It shouldn't be that hard. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, like really should. Look, I don't mean for you to have to throw your your fellow development industry yeah, folks yeah. under it, the it, bus it here. It depends like like okay, this I don't remember. This has got to be a management issue. Yeah. That's my point. I'm not throwing developers under the bus. It feels to me like yes. they launched way too early because of something that I actually com- commended them for, which was they saw Battlefield launch and immediately hard flop. Yeah. And they were like you can you can play Halo and we were all like sick and it was nowhere near ready. Yeah. And they should have held it back. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. So now like 80% of the team is probably working on stupid cosmetics and stupid battle I mean, passes and whatever. That's in here uh, in the March 7th to June 27th new 100 tier battle pass. It's coming. There's cosmetics coming all the time. Yeah, for all the dozens of players that are still playing it. Yep. Really brutal. Really brutal. Really frustrating. Okay, so tell me this then. From your perspective, okay, I've had a couple of, of, of comments about how you are. You're, would you say that you lead the team at floatplane.com? Yeah. Floatplane development team. Okay. Yeah. So from your perspective, how hard is it to implement the feature where you might get a notification when someone replies to your comment under a video? Would you say it is extremely <laughs> hard, <laughs> somewhat hard, moderately hard? Somewhat easy or extremely easy? Highly ignorable. <laughs> Highly ignorable. Would you say that that's a management issue? Yes. <laughs> okay, we do actually have some really cool features coming on Floatplane soon. Uh, picture in Picture is coming. Picture in Picture and background audio are, are coming. There's Chromecast fixes that <laughs> should be coming, but we'll talk about Google being annoying in a moment. Uh, there's Content Progress 
we don't really know what to call it, and it's never going to have a forward-facing name, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but people have mentioned that they want to be able to. They especially mentioned with the like, however long it was like four hour long, four hour call, call me, me Chris, Chris collab video. uncut. So they mentioned that they wanted to be able to see where they were previously in it, which was not something that we had received a ton of feedback for in the past. It was a known missing feature, yeah. but not a ton of people were complaining until like this really long piece of content landed. So that's coming. That's like really, really close to being done. Um, and it, it will it will resume you where you were previously. If you're within like 15 seconds of the end of the video, it will assume that you're back at the beginning, all this type of stuff. Um, there's also the new player, which is finally getting back on track again. Theater mode. So it has theater mode. It has some other stuff going on. Um, uh, there's editing and deleting of comments under videos. So no notifications yet, but... Hey, that's... better better control of your own comments and yep, stuff cool. is coming. There's 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 a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline, but yeah, cool. We uh we don't have the development team that you know three four three does. I mean, hey, maybe three four three doesn't little, have a lot of developers. A little smaller, like I maybe it's a very whenever, small. It's a tight knit. Whenever I say some stuff team. about development on WAN Show, and then I get people reaching out from those companies, often what I hear is that a lot of these developers want to fix this stuff yeah. or want to do these oh, that's, things. That's always the story. Look, you got to understand. It's not like these people yeah. are incapable. Software, and it's, it's, it's not even that. It's, it's not that they don't business. have the, the passion for it. Software developers, in a lot of cases, especially the ones that work in utterly thankless industries like game development, they oh, yeah, are brutal. artists every bit as much as the artists who uh, draw the assets or model the characters or, or whatever else it is. They are every bit as much artists. The the art of of uh, the art of coding how a projectile might bounce off of an object and create the, you know these sparks that come out at oh well if it comes in at this angle it comes out at that that is it's freaking art it's all art. And so, you know, you talk to these people and they get, they get so frustrated, right? Because they want to spend the time. Often very passionate about the things that they work on. Want to do it properly, right? But yeah. it's... And, but, but a lot of these companies are super massive. And when you're super massive, it can be very difficult to move. It can be very difficult to make make things happen. Things can be very rigid, um, and and that's that can be difficult for the managers. That can be difficult for the developers. It can be difficult difficult in a lot of parts of the chain. And something that I don't have experience with directly is working in one of those gigantic companies uh, because I would hate it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have no desire for that. That's how we retain whatsoever. him. Yeah, we just uh, we stay just <laughs> small enough for his tolerance level. Yeah. So when LMG got too big, okay, well. No, you work for Float Plane. Now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was expressing concerns about us getting too big like many years ago. <laughs> yeah, did. so it's it's uh that type of thing. I understand. I empathize. It's one of the reasons why I don't work in that industry. So it is what it is. But yeah, I I understand it can be tough, and I understand you're you're often left wanting because you want to fix the thing. You hear the feedback. You know you want to do something about it, and you just can't. So I get it. But yeah, I, it's very disappointing. Some, pe some people status. are discussing whether the like bullet ricochet sparks or whatever, that, that whether that qualifies as art. No, that's physics, right? But there's an art to, to physics. applying physics. Yeah, like, okay, okay, think think about this, right? Okay. Uh, do, Science can be yeah, art. Grab, grab, grab your water bottle. Okay, we're having an epic movie sword fight. Ding, ding, ding. Okay. See, Ding. he automatically started doing mouth sound effects. <laughs> Why? Because metal clashing against each other, swords clashing against each other sounds stupid and boring. There is artistry to it. It's You can't just go, well, my physics calculations are actually correct. Therefore, this uh, fire is uh, uh, accurate simulationally to the real world. Like, that. that's not how it works. That's not how video games work. You don't actually want to play that game, right? So, no, there's absolutely room for artistic license. When it comes to things like like buildings falling down or when it comes to the way that grass waves in the wind or, or whatever else it is, it's absolutely art. And I will not accept Thank any Lord other is. opinion. Sorry. No. <laughs> no. No. There's there's an art to I, I, I strongly am of the opinion that some people are talking about like 
things that separate away from that. There is an art to uh, making what you're there. There was something that I used to think was really, really cool. And I'm trying to make sure I quote it correctly. I believe it was Morrowind. Mm -hmm. I used to really, really, really love watching like the special edition DVDs of like the making of this game or whatever. I remember there was a Halo one back in the day that was super, super cool. And there was one from Elder Scrolls, but I don't remember if it was for like Oblivion or Morrowind or or what, but it was like from kind of back then. I think it was Morrowind. And they were talking about how they had to put certain assets on different parts of the disc so that it could read it faster. Or else, like the game would like have issues loading and could crash and stuff that because it would totally take it too long. That there's an art to that, in my opinion. Actually, there's an art to a lot of different. You're gonna have to see things. what I had typed up as the next thing I wanted to say here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like it doesn't just have to be things that you that you see. It yeah. can be. There's an art to dealing with the technical limitations and compromises that are inherent to gaming, is what I said. Because you would rarely be able to run an accurate simulation in real time at 60 to 120 or I mean, gamers are getting more demanding all the time 240 frames per second good luck to say that. that there was no art involved with developing the software that got the first rocket to the moon is crazy in my opinion there is it was morrowind yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think a lot of games. I mean, Sony talked about in the PlayStation 5 launch how there was like some Spider-Man game that had the same garbage can asset uh, within on the disc le- like hundreds of times or something like that because it's just a waste. They might need to grab it again. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or I, something like that. One of my I favorite ones the is that the, from Super Mario Bros, the, the bush and the cloud is the same thing. It's just recolored. Did you know that? I have heard that, but I had forgotten. So yes, it's cool. really funny. And like, th- yeah, thinking to do that and, and, and knowing that you need to do things like that and actually implementing those types of actions and making it so that basically, unless someone told you, you're probably not going to notice is so cool. And a lot of that is, a lot of those types of things are lost in the modern day. You have Call of Duty downloads that are 150 gigs and all this type of stuff, but they are doing other artistic type of things. I, I don't know. I don't know. I just want to do a call out for merch messages, guys. So don't send super chats. Don't use Twitch bits. It's all about the merch messages. You can check out our merchandise on lttstore.com. And if you shop during the live stream, you can... Oh, we actually have a deal. The deal's down there. You can buy a WAN hoodie and WAN sweatpants and get a free toque or beanie for my American friends. The discount applies automatically when you add all three of them to the cart. Um, But the way it works is on the WAN show. You don't just give a commission over to Google or Amazon for no apparent reason. Instead... You can send a message and Bell, our producer, who we have a camera for now, check it out. Woo, there he is. Whoa. Uh, Bell, our producer, will curate messages for us to respond to. He will respond to some himself when he knows the answer already. And we'll also just take, you know, shout outs like, hi, mom, or whatever, and put them down in the lower third. Um, So we're going to get to some of those in a little bit, but we're going to push them a little bit later in the show because people have asked us to do more tech topics and then more merch messages kind of at the end. So you want to get those in. Uh, It's a really cool concept because, right, instead of giving a commission to Google or Amazon, you um, don't at all. And then instead of getting just colorful text, you get colorful text, you get a banner, and then you also get, um, you know, your order in the mail which is pretty neat. That is pretty neat. It is pretty neat. And far far be it from me to to just promote mindless consumerism if you don't need anything right now. Uh, you can always pick up a gift card for something later if you like really have something that you wanted to engage with. Gift cards do work for merch messages, um, but you will, you'll have to spend them eventually, obviously. But we're going to have lots of cool stuff coming down, coming down the pipe. Um, what do we want to talk about next? Uh, well, we should probably get through the sponsors. Okay. All right, show is brought to you by Wealthfront. Right now, the economy is in a bit of a tricky place. Is it a recession? Is it a bear market? What's going on with inflation? There's a lot of questions and not a lot of certain answers. Uh, We don't know, but what we can tell you is that Wealthfront's a great place to earn more on your savings if you live in the U.S. Wealthfront is an automated investment app that is designed to help you save and invest your money. Right now, you can earn 2% annual yield with a Wealthfront cash account. And getting a cash account is easy. It just takes a few minutes to sign up and you'll immediately start earning 2% interest on your savings. 
For When you open an account today, you'll get an extra $50 bonus with a deposit of $500 or more. There are already nearly half a million people using Wealthfront to save more. So earn more and build long-term wealth with Wealthfront. Go to Wealthfront.com slash WAN to get started. That's Wealthfront.com slash WAN. Uh, the show is also brought to you by Kioxia. Kioxia didn't just invent flash memory. They continue to innovate in the space to this day. Their new XG8 series SSD is optimized to give the latest gaming laptops and pre-built PCs the power and performance they need for today's best games. That's right. Kioxia actually paid us to promote a product you can't buy. They did. It's, a, it's an OEM product. <laughs> So pretty cool. the best you can do is buy a laptop and then be happily surprised, surprised that yeah. it has an XG8 in it using Kioxia's latest 112 layer 3D TLC flash memory and PCIe Gen 4. It can reach up to sequential reads and write speeds of 7 gigabytes per second and 5,800 megabytes per second. And it's available in a compact M.2 2280 form factor all the way up to a whopping 4 terabytes. It's found in a lot of the newest OEM machines and you can learn more about the XG8 SSD from Kioxia at the link down below. This is one, okay, uh, I digress here. Let's go ahead and wipe the uh, sponsor lower third. I'll give it a couple beats. Maybe the Kyoxia rep won't keep watching. What is up with that? I don't know. You put all the work into developing a product. Why not just put it in a retail box? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, do, okay do, do, hold on, hold on. Okay, to be clear, there are like issues with just launching every product okay you have to you have not to, if you're silverstone you have to well okay but like, more skews how and and is silverstone like a market leader in any of the categories that they participated that would be really hard to define because that is a lot of categories that's a lot of categories see they don't have the focus that's quite to be clear ones. love my bros at silverstone but of like course. and when i say market leader i don't even mean performance they have great performing products what they don't have is the sales that should accompany them if maybe they had a little bit more focus. Or if they, yeah, spent a little bit more money on marketing. Well, no, they're a purely engineering company. I don't think they've ever spent a dime on marketing. Yeah, that might be part of the problem. That might be part of the problem. Anyway, the point is, <clears throat> so there are clear costs that come along with launching a product. One of them is marketing, which hilariously, Kioxia is actually already doing anyway. They're doing it. Um, and they then, need to make it available to buy. <laughs> another one is is production, right? You got to pay of for course. that up front. Your yep. suppliers aren't just gonna like give you free raw materials to make SSDs out of, and then you know hope at some point you'll sell them and pay them back. Now you got to pay for that stuff. Um, you know you have to. Well, that's really it. You have to build inventory and you have to market it, and then they're already doing half of it. So I just don't really get it. Um, let's go ahead and move on to our next sponsor, Epidemic Sound. Epidemic Sound provides high quality, professionally produced music and sound effects for you to use. Whether you're a video creator on YouTube or you need it for work at an agency, Epidemic Sound has a license to cover it through their personal and commercial plans. You can choose from tens of thousands of diverse and original sound effects and tracks, and their ear feature, EAR, lets you select specific portions of any track to search for music in their catalog so you can find a sound alike that is exactly what you're looking for. So sign up today using the link in the description for a three a three 30 day trial. A free 30 day trial. All right. What do you want to do? I'm right. going to let you pick the topics and then I'm just going to live with the consequences here. Do I rant about Google now? Sure. Yeah, okay. I like it. So my, my Friday... You just don't want to do any of these topics, do you? What? What do you mean? No, I'm down. Okay, all again, right. do you want to? No, no. Let's rant Forbes. about Forbes. Let's rant about top Google. creators list. No, let's rant. Why about weren't Google. you on it? I don't, that's not the. Why point. do you suck? Oh my god. Linus Media Group trending down, not on the Forbes top creator list. Why is this happening? Someone explain. I want to hear the Google story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> Well, Google's also jerks, so that's a good segue. All right. uh, so we went to go launch our, our Chromecast fix update thing for for Android. <laughs> and uh, we, we hit a wall, a fairly reasonable wall. I don't mind hitting this wall. It was frustrating to deal with, but I understand why good it's wall. there. And it's, it's probably the greatest a good wall. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mind uh, hitting this wall. <laughs> we basically had to define how we 
collect and share data through our app so that when people are looking at apps on the app store, they can see what those apps uh, at least claim they do with the data. It was a little bit confusing because the way that they use the term sharing and the way that they use the term collecting is a little bit odd. And I, in, uh, in my opinion, and this is definitely a very subjective opinionated thing, in my opinion, it makes it unclear to users. Because if you go to the App Store, App Store, let's use uh, Netflix. Let me know when you're ready. Uh, no, I did App Store. I need to say Play Store. <laughs> I always do that. Hold on. Okay. What did it used to be called? I, I told myself I was never going to forgive them for calling it Play Store because that's Store stupid. Play Store sucks. What did it used to be called? Google Marketplace? Is that it? I honestly don't remember. App Market? Holy crap. What did the Play Store used to be called? Well, we can share my screen if you want. Oh, sure. Android okay, so Market. Android Market. Android Market. Okay. I actually liked that more, but that's whatever. Um, so you want to be able to see this, essentially. So we're looking at Netflix. Um, if you scroll down on Netflix, you can see data safety. They say no data shared with third parties. This might sound a little bit surprising. Yeah. Uh, maybe a not level. for Netflix. They're gigantic. Maybe they all make their own stuff. I don't know. Sure. Uh, but there's quite a few different apps that you're going to be like, hmm, that seems a little bit weird about. And I'll explain why it's basically always that way. And then you scroll down and it goes data collected. It's like, okay, cool. And you can expand it. And it says like um, they collect approximate location. And these are the reasons why they do it for personalization, security and compliance, fraud prevention, analytics, app functionality, whatever. This is a very sensible tool. I was almost gonna say good. I don't personally think I wanna go that far. Um, I'm gonna say very sensible. The reason why I have issues with it is the same reason why it took us so long to fill out this form, is because we interpreted this incorrectly. No data shared or data sharing in general. Data collection by them <clears throat> is defined as anything that is collected uh, by your app and shared with third parties. The sharing is not defined as sharing mm -hmm. if it's handed to a third party and then processed on your behalf. So we don't share financial data which was surprising to me because I would always define that, yeah, we don't want to store your financial data. I don't want to touch your financial data. I want to touch your financial data as little as possible. Oh, yeah. I want, want to store it that. nowhere. I want no history of it. Do you remember how it. stressed we were when we were trying to implement payments on the forum for the like contributor badges and stuff? And Terrifying. Like, I, like basically... The only thing that I, I don't think I ever cared more about anything to do with that forum than, holy crap, do Let's not store really any make of sure this. we never store any payment data. Yeah, yeah I don't want it. So it yeah. goes straight to Stripe or Braintree slash PayPal, whatever. Um, and th there's other things. We also use uh, Firebase because we want to uh, have some analytics about crashes and see where problems are in the app and some other stuff like that. But... That's data being processed on our behalf. So it's not sharing. I see. That's weird to me. Yeah. If I was an average user, I mean, <laughs> earlier today, <laughs> I would not have interpreted it that way. That's very weird to me. And that makes things unclear to users in my opinion. Okay, so that was like a little bit frustrating. I think this tool is uh, a sensible thing to have, but I think a lot of users are gonna read it incorrectly. Um, so I don't know how much help it actually provides in its current state. We finish that, we submit the app. We're like, okay, sweet. It's gonna take a couple days to actually um, get sent out to people, but hopefully people will have Chromecast fixes before the weekend is over, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jaden pointed this out. We figured this out during the meeting too. And I can actually look it up right now if you want. TikTok says it shares zero data. <laughs> oh. TikTok, I, would, I have to find it, give me a second. Okay, so right. TikTok. On the clock and the party don't stop. Um, I don't remember how you get to the thing. Uh, let's click on this. And then data safety. Yeah, yeah. No data is shared with third parties. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Probably because they process it on behalf of TikTok or whatever. So it's just all garbage, basically. Don't don't worry about that thing at all. Um, and then, okay, so the part that actually really blew me up was we go to submit this bug fix and we get denied. And Jaden's like, hey, 
we got denied. Also, yeah. they said that they sent you an email about this problem a while ago. So like you should have fixed it. And I was like, what? Okay. So I look into it. Yeah. I go like view email. Cause it's like, oh yeah, we sent this thing to you. And you can look in the dashboard and it'll show you the email. I click view email. It's head to toe Chinese. I'm like, oh yeah, I saw this a while ago and, and ignored it because I thought it was like a phishing email because it's fully in Chinese. Our account has never been set to Chinese. I have no idea why they sent me an email in entirely Chinese. I'm never going to look at that and be like, this is definitely actually for me. I'm going to figure out what this says. So I don't know. My bad, I guess. The, the thing that was wrong was it said that we didn't have a link to our privacy policy. They linked in that message to the part of the dashboard where we're supposed to put our privacy policy in. And okay. I was very surprised because I'm like, what? We've had the same privacy policy link for years. Yeah. I click on the link. There's our privacy policy. I'm like, huh? So I copy and paste it because I have preached about this in the past. You shouldn't just type things in. When they're in a dashboard, you should copy and paste it. Because I'm like, maybe there's something weird with a slash or whatever. Yeah, copy sure. and paste it, dump it in the browser, brings us straight to the privacy policy. I have literally no idea what happened. I think, considering the email was in Chinese, they were viewing a different app oh. and then just flagged us by accident. Didn't Instead Apple of the pull one that, that too at one point? To. They both have. For the so, 30% commission that like they get, you'd think that... They could run it a little better. Yeah. So those Chromecast fixes will, will get to you eventually. I had to appeal the problem that isn't a problem. Um, and that is going to take at least seven days. And then hopefully they actually do it properly and release it. And then we will have to actually republish the update. And then it will take a few days from there. So... It's probably going to be like a week and a half, two weeks before you actually get the update. I'm sorry. We're doing what we can. All right. Should we talk about Apple's far out, man, announcements? Or the Forbes top creator list is dumb? You vote. You vote. You get, there's one vote. Monarch vote. Um, You're the new king. Let's, let's take a spice break and go to Apple. <laughs> spice break. Yeah. <laughs> spice break. All right. Um, this was prepared for me by Jonathan Horst. I'm going to confess, I was really busy this week. I did not watch the Apple event. All I did was read the script that was, it was actually full on hashtag lie-ness. I had no idea what I was reading the script about. Alex, Alex Clark prepared it. <laughs> um, and Jonathan Horst prepared this now. I haven't looked at any of it. So there's a plus size, iPhone 14 and 14 Pro. There's no new mini. Uh, the vanilla iPhone gets a 6.7 inch size, uh, $100 more. Okay. Uh, fun fact, the difference in cost for that slightly larger screen is not $100. But, <laughs> I mean, you're buying an iPhone. You knew that. And there's, there's margin on everything. Frankly, yeah. There's, there, there's, margin on, there's margin on everything. And, 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 okay, I want to make it really clear. I've said this before, but people don't seem to hear it. It's not Apple's um, making money that I object to. A lot of the time, it's just their attitude about it that I find... Uh, frustrating the fact that they will say that oh it's about mm, being environmentally conscious it's about this it's about that it's about user safety no it's about making money just just own it um emergency sos satellite feature this is super cool so basically you can send off an sos in an emergency when you are out of cell phone signal had you seen this already I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, actually. it has an agree. app that like allows you to like freaking line up your phone with the satellite to oh, get just enough bit. signal to send out an SOS and that's it. That's sweet. And this is not just for that's emergencies. Good. Like this could just be if you're the kind of person who just goes off grid for long periods at a time, you can actually send a message to your friends and loved ones, you know, every day or every couple of days. Ping, I'm alive. Ping, I'm alive. Ping, no need to send help yet. Ping, I'm alive. That, that's freaking awesome. Yeah, that's good. That's a game changer. Very good. The pro version gets the Dynamic Island, which is... An amazing name. <laughs> so good. So which I would you go to? It. The Dynamic Island or the Lonely Island? Oh, there's some stuff in boxes at the Lonely Island. Yeah, I heard there's some pretty good stuff in boxes there. <laughs> you ever open up those boxes? Because, like, let me tell you. Bang! Woo! Woo-hoo! Spicy. Justin. Justin. 
Sorry. Um, it replaced. <laughs> that took me a sec. I know what you're referencing now. It replaces the notch with a pill shaped cutout on the OLED screen uh, that resizes in software for notifications, etc. So they've decided not to eliminate the notch, but rather to double down on it. Now oh, it yeah. is a feature, it is not a bug. Thick notch. I still hate it and cool. It's no longer um, a notch, guys. It's an island. To be clear, I hate it now. I, I'll try it. I'll try it. I'll, I'll get an iPhone, whatever one, 14 Pro, I guess, and I'll, I'll daily drive it for a little bit, and I'll see if it can. I'll see if it can change my opinion when I set a timer and I get that little no animation. Maybe it will completely change how I feel about having a mm. exit wound in the middle of my screen. <laughs> Honestly, that's one of the things that I love so much about the Fold is it has that underscreen camera. So you just do not need to ever see the, well, okay. So I can't find anything that's full screen because so many apps are designed to hide stupid <laughs> um, hole punch cameras and notches. Uh, anyway, the point is, okay, full screen, full screen content of any kind. I, I basically don't notice it and I really like it. Uh, speeds and feeds. The iPhone 14 Pro gets the A16 chip. It's four nanometer, 50% more memory bandwidth compared to the competitors who they claim are as fast as an A13, which I actually kind of believe at this point. Uh, it's been it's been Apple versus other Apple. S like an old man pouring out molasses for a <laughs> long time when it comes to mobile mobile CPU speed. Like honestly at this point I feel like the fact that the iPhone 14 did not get the A16 chip. It, instead, it gets the old A15 chip, but like with five GPU cores now, like the 13 Pro. The fact that Apple is even bothering to release faster, newer processors at this point is an indication that this stuff was just all on their roadmap before they realized that the rest of the industry was going to completely stop moving, right? Like, like the, I mean, they've already done all the R&D. They might as well fab new ones, but at this point, they're probably sitting there going, well, these guys are so far behind. We don't even need to bother putting these new chips in our new phones. And I actually see this, hold on, I see this as a win. Not putting a new processor in, in this new phone, the iPhone 14. Yeah, see, I knew he was going to make that face. Hold on, I'm going to let you try and figure out why I think it's a win. I genuinely have no idea. Part of Price? Apple's calculus. Oh, no. Okay. It's still expensive. Yeah. I've <laughs> got a price bump, actually. Uh, <laughs> part of Apple's calculus for software support is the SOC in the product. And part of their calculus is some kind of minimum lifetime for every product. So... When you get it, oh, so, okay. see, see where okay. I'm going now. So there was a chip that, if I recall correctly, was common to like phone, iPad 2, I want to say, and like an Apple TV or something like that. The point is, it got used very broadly across Apple's product portfolio. And what ultimately ended up happening was the products that had that SOC ended up getting outsized yeah. long term product support because. A lot of the time, the idiosyncrasies and the challenges around bringing an updated software to a particular device is really just about the SOC that's in that device. So if you already had to do the work for the iPhone 14, well, even though the 13 series is a year older, well, screw it. You might as well, you might as well port it to that too. Unless there's some huge compelling feature that you know, require that, that is integral to the new version of the OS, and you really need to drop that older device, which clearly ain't the case here. Yeah. I suspect that this will mean an extra year of updates for iPhone 13 users. There's no way Apple would ever confirm something like this, but I suspect, based on their track record, that we will actually see that, which is cool. That's good. Yeah. No, yeah. I dig that. I dig that a lot, actually. Um, Price bump, you mentioned it in most places except China, Canada, the US, where it's $799 for an iPhone 14 and $999 for an iPhone 14 Pro. Sick. Uh, but ever, everywhere else gets a price bump. 
which is pretty sweet, I guess. Um, speeds and feeds. Uh, oh, yeah, I talked about that. Uh, camera updates. Apple claims 2 to 3x improvements in low light performance. Sensors and aperture are bigger. There's now a photonic engine, uh, even processing the photos more. Um, okay, cool. Uh, and the Pro gets a brand new 48 megapixel sensor on the main camera, allowing a 2x telephoto option. Uh, I guess that's about it. I mean, there's the new watch. Uh, frankly, I can't say that I am that impressed. Like, it, there's lots of cool stuff, I guess. The the Ultra model can be used as a dive computer up to 40 meters deep. So that's around 120 feet. Uh, it has an action button to integrate with fitness apps and scenarios. 36-hour battery, 60-hour with low power setting in a coming update, and two speakers for an 86-decibel emergency siren. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I mean, user safety is uh, is a big deal. I like stuff like that. I'm yep. totally down. If, if one of the greatest things about smartphone is that it combined a bunch of devices into one. And not just like, oh, I can listen to music, right? So it's like a boom box and a, cell, and a normal cell phone. But also flashlights, right? No, it's not the best flashlight ever. But you can get a flashlight on there that you can do work. But you can find little things with it or whatever. Adding more things to that pile is good. Why not? Um, one of the other new features for both the Series 8 and the Ultra is a body temperature sensor to track changes over time to enhance cycle tracking, so like menstrual cycle tracking, and provide a retrospective estimate of when someone has ovulated, which could be useful for fairly obvious reasons. Warning if you're in certain states. Okay, so that's actually one of the other things that we were going to talk about. I guess we're going to take a little, we're going to take do a little side quest here. Okay, sorry, uh, I didn't... Know. We received some mixed comments on our coverage of the Apple Far Out video with regard to our statement about the Apple Watch Ultra's ability to track women's bodily rhythms. Um, but then, keep that data secure and secret, even from Apple, from, from, from everyone. So we noted that this degree of privacy is important today, given the fact that in some states now, abortion has suddenly gone from legal to illegal, and such data could be weaponized against the woman who generated that data. Now, my personal position on this issue is that A, it's more complex for me than this side or this side, um, and B, it's not something anyone asked me about. So with that said, my comment in the video was not an attempt to wade into the US abortion conversation. I have no desire to do that whatsoever. My point was that laws are not static. And regardless of your stance on Roe versus Wade or whatever the hot button issue of the day is, whether it's 2FA or, or 2FA, 2A or something else, you should support the right to maintain the privacy of your data. And as such, you should never, not even if it's the other guys, you should never support the practice of your own healthcare data being used against That's you. That's actually a huge thing. There's a lot of insurance companies that are very enthusiastically buying your, you know, when you like submit DNA to various DNA companies to figure out your lineage, whatever. Yep. Those companies, as far as my understanding goes, are making the lion's share of their money, yep. just selling all of your data to insurance companies so they can charge you more. Luke and I have talked about this pretty extensively in the past. Um, there was one WAN show in particular where we discussed a smart toilet that would analyze your urine and I think your stool as well to help screen for diseases. And our positions do vary a little on some of these issues, but I think it's fair to say that we agree that these could be useful technologies, but also that they can have very dangerous knock-on effects. So like, just understand the issues and make yeah, the decisions for they yourself. They could dramatically increase health insurance premiums, for example, for at-risk individuals through no fault of their own. And the truly scary yes. part of all of this is the uncontrolled way that this data moves oh. around after it's been collected through data sharing agreements and corporate acquisitions. Frankly, I believe our unease around the collection of personal data and desire to keep it private should not be a partisan issue. And if you think it's a partisan issue, you need to wake up because this is a problem. What if tomorrow, okay, the Apple Watch used its accelerometers and its microphones to track how fast you drive your car and Apple was forced to fire over a little SMS message to law enforcement every time you went five miles over the limit. How'd you feel about that? What if what you were doing was totally safe? Or what if it was necessary due to an emergency? Remember the bit about laws changing that I just mentioned? What if prohibition came back into effect and your Apple Watch uh, used its temperature and heart rate monitors to detect a state of intoxication? 
Should it draft a little email for the cops and your insurance company and let them know about your little indulgence? Or will probably also know if you're driving at the same time. Or should that information be secure and belong only to you? The bottom line is this. Women's rights are human rights. And when it comes to protecting private health information, people across the aisle should be absolutely united. That is all I have to say about that. Cool, 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 cool. AirPods Pro second generation. Now featuring the H2 processor with improvements to sound processing, active noise cancellation. They claim 2x more, whatever that means. Um, personalized spatial audio, and they offer adaptive transparency, which minimizes loud sound intensity. That's kind of cool. Uh, I don't know that I would use something like that at like a, what, maybe like a concert or something. I often use my AirPods Pros. Actually, oh, I know what I would use them for. I often use them just as like earplugs, like when I'm working on tools and stuff. So having a transparency mode that will take a bit of the edge off of like a table saw or something like that, that would be, that would be actually pretty sick. Um, okay, so I will obviously buy these, daily drive them. My my first gen AirPods Pros are in pretty rough shape at this point. One of them is getting kind of like scratchy, crackly sounding. Oh and, dang! Yeah, the battery life's not what it was. So I'm I'm stoked. I'm stoked. Uh, there's a volume slider. You can slide the finger up and down on the touch control to adjust volume. That sounds pretty cool. I hope I sleep in them, so I hope that um, moving my head around is not going to do anything. I've had issues with my Sennheisers. Uh, those are my my backup or like sound really good ones. And then it's the LG FP8s for like better comfort. Uh, I I don't I sometimes wake up in the middle of the night with dead earphones, and I I ever since we had kids. Like I need something to in order to sleep, so I'll have to I'll swap my earphones to something that has a battery, and then try and go back to sleep. <laughs> I, I know, right? Uh, it's dumb. I didn't realize that was a since you had kids thing. I thought that was just forever. No, since I had kids, yeah. Because oh, yeah. um, I, I well, no, I used to need complete silence to sleep, but then once that wasn't an option, and Yvonne was going to be the one with the kid, during, particularly when our son was born. Since she was going to be the one with him during the day, and she was going to get to like nap during the day, I had to be able to sleep sometimes for longer periods because I was going to go to work, like you know, new company and stuff. Um, so I, I I had to learn, I had to find something that would help me tune out whatever was going on around me, and that's what I settled on. And now I now it's a crutch. Yeah. <laughs> now I can't get over yeah. it. Uh, there's a new extra small silicone tip. The second gen tips are not compatible with first gen. Okay. Better charging case. You want to blah, blah, blah. Uh, Oh, a speaker for finding it, which is nice. Plus a lanyard loop. Nice. Battery life up to six hours with ANC and 30 hours included with the case total. Um, okay. And still 250 bucks. I'm in. Someone's I'm saying, so in. How do you feel about Apple still not putting USB C on them? Pretty good question. Um, Functionally, it doesn't matter. I already own lightning cables everywhere I need to charge my AirPods. Um, for me, it doesn't matter. However, I would like to see the industry moving towards standardization on USB-C sooner rather than later. And I wish Apple wasn't just dragging ass on this for no obvious reason. So they, they can certainly afford to redo the tooling of the outer case to make a slightly bigger hole. So there, that's what I have to say. Next topic. Can you please not pick something controversial? Uh, <laughs> There's nothing not controversial. I was going to say, is there anything left? <laughs> uh, merch messages. <laughs> Bell, hit us with a couple. Wait, Jasco. Okay, sure. We can talk about Jasco. Um, or we can do merch messages for a bit and Jasco after. Let's do a couple. Let's do a couple. Yeah, we'll yeah, do yeah. Jasco after that. Hello. Uh, first oh, question here. To, yeah, I was about to turn it on. It's from Sebastian. Look at that. We've got, we've got a producer cam now. Look at this guy. I hope you like this side of my head. Nice hoodie, <laughs> nice hoodie by the way. Yeah, Thank why you. isn't it? Like, LTGstore.com. Uh, so the first question here is from Sebastian. I was thinking about getting an Aura Ring, but I don't like the price and subscription system of the third gen. I was thinking about getting a use gen two. I'd like to ask what your battery life was like and how you feel about using it over the last few years. Uh, my battery life was really good on the gen two. Uh, I'm also not a fan of the subscription service, but I got to tell you, I don't think getting a gen two helps you avoid the subscription service. At least that's my understanding. I could be wrong. It could be that the Gen 3 is subscription only unless you are grandfathered in because you were an existing Gen 2 owner who bought a Gen 3. That's what I did. That's how I ended up grandfathered in. You can see I'm actually not wearing mine. The biggest problem I have with the Gen 3 is that they stopped doing half sizes. 
So I, I'm an eight and a half and nine is too big. It comes on and off very easily. And eight is so difficult to get on and off that I find myself just not bothering to charge it. Um, so if the sizing works perfectly for you, honestly, I was, I was really happy with the thing. Um, it's by far the best health and fitness tracker experience I've had. I can't say that I know it was the most accurate. Have you ever used Whoop? No, I haven't used Whoop. Okay. Okay. So it's the it's the best one that I've had. Uh, I was actually just like wondering. I'm not like well, you haven't tried this one. Just... Miles ahead of my experience with the Apple Watch, I'd be like driving home after badminton, and it'd be like, "Keep it up." What are you talking about? The Ura Ring would never make those kinds of mistakes. <laughs> or I would be I would be actively playing. I'd be on the court and it'd be like, you need to stand up and move around a bit. Meanwhile, the Ura Ring's like, you're going hard, dude. <laughs> and like, yes. I'm like drenched in sweat and my Apple Watch is like, hey, yeah, po hey potato should, guy. Maybe, maybe you should, should touch some grass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? It's ri ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I... Hmm. Oh man, yeah, it's it's tough. I was really happy with my experience with it when it fit properly, uh, but the subscription model for it, I think, is a is a tougher sell. But I also, in their case, do understand why they're doing it. They have done a lot of development on the software in the time that I've been using the product, and something's got to pay for that. So, there, it's nuanced. Uh, oh, I should, you know what, just in the interest of full disclosure, Ura has reached out about sponsoring us. The The first ring I got, I got a Gen 1 that they sent because they were going to do some kind of sponsorship. Or was it a Gen 2? I don't know. I got one ring comped. Uh, maybe it was a Gen 2. And then they were like going to do a sponsorship or something, but then they just didn't. But then I was just using it and liked it. And then they contacted me as a Gen 2. Yeah, it, was, it must have been a Gen 2. As a Gen 2 owner and said, uh, hey, if you upgrade to the Gen 3, you get grandfathered in for the lifetime subscription, uh, but you have to do it now before the Gen 3 launches. And I was like, ugh, you shouldn't pre-order, but I actually really like this thing. So I bought a Gen 3, which unfortunately, now that they don't do half sizes, has been actually less useful to me in a certain um, certain way of thinking. Um, and then now they have come back and they're saying they're interested in sponsoring us again. So the relationship with them is a little complicated, is all I'm trying to say. So you can take everything I said about them with that in mind. There. So I have bought one. Meanwhile, my comment on Whoop was not a recommendation. Their onboarding process, as someone pointed out in Flowplane, I agree, is like a little wacky and I'm, I don't like it. You don't see a lot of charts until you've had it for 30 days and the return window is 30 days long. Um, also, the subscription is like really expensive. I don't know how expensive the Aura Ring is. But the whoop is really expensive. Yeah, Rohanology. Me falling asleep after an exercise routine and my Apple Watch ending up recording a two-hour nap as exercise time happened regularly. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Next question here is from Cameron. Have you ever considered developing a custom GPT-3 model using past LTT scripts and video stats to help writers write scripts faster, similar to uh, GitHub's Copilot? I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, we don't look backwards much. Um, one, of the, one of the strongest criti critiques I can give of a script is, mm, this is very 2019 LTT. You know, we, we are always trying to evolve. We're always trying to do things differently. Every once in a while, I, you know, nobody's perfect. We'll, we'll get lazy or we'll make a mistake or we'll do something that is, that is not forward thinking. But um, it, it has never really been, um, you know, my way of handling things to dwell on the past. It's one of the reasons that I think our, our daily release schedule works so well for us because we don't have time to dwell on the past. Okay, today's video, not performing great. Okay, uh, time, to, time to think about tomorrow's video, right? Um, so I, I honestly, I'm not going to say never because, man, some of that stuff is getting <laughs> pretty incredible. But I don't see us trying to use utilize I, I, AI writing anytime in the near future. We don't have the the bandwidth for it right now. Um, but I've thought about some stuff where it might be able to be useful. Um, but I wouldn't say in like in writing scripts. I would almost say in like a suggestion type format. Um, like if we were feeding data into it based on 
uh, like watch time metrics and and all this other mm. type of stuff, being able to suggest like make sure that something and it it should try to like read the script and figure out how long it's going to take. Sure. And it could insert like a make sure you have something punchy here or like blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Like this is the best place for your LTT store call to action. Trying to like massage it a little bit, but not writing it for people because of exactly what you said about not looking into the past. Um, but yeah, we don't have the, we don't have the bandwidth for it right now, but I th- I think there is, I think there's things we could do with development to try to help little bits kind of all around the business it's just deciding where the biggest impact is and i don't think it's there right now yeah that's fair okay one more for now question here from anon how many jobs did the two of you have before starting ltt do you have any advice before breaking into the job market i had a ton um i had a lot i started working really early um my parents are freaking awesome, but we weren't like wealthy growing up. So, um, having a job was like a good idea. I don't know. I also didn't mind working. Um, so yeah, I had a ton of jobs breaking into the job market depends on your age and it depends on your experience entirely. For me, when I first broke into the job market, it didn't matter. (laughs) Walk to whatever store or walk to whoever person's house like uh, some of oh, the yeah, things I everyone did... was hiring at that point. I remember noting, I remember like noticing the quality of like Subway sandwiches going down dramatically in that like several year period because it was like they would hire literally anyone off the street. There was nobody stayed at, any, at a job for very long. Like once they were trained, they're just like out of there. Like nobody was trained. I'm talking potentially like before that. Like I started working before I could legally have a job. I'm talking about like 2000, like, man, when, when, okay, when was it? It was, it was when I was getting my scuba certification. So it would have been around 2010. Oh, I'm talking like 2001. Oh, okay. Well, carry on. Yeah. So how I first started doing things is like I would walk around my neighborhood and see like, oh, someone's doing a landscaping project. Can I offer to help for relatively like not okay amounts of money? (laughs) Because they'll probably say yes, but I could I could get some work. I could get some money and I didn't really mind it. I'm like shoveling whatever. It's a type of physical activity. I didn't really care. Um, Or I mow lawns or or one of the like main first things that I got was just delivering newspapers which sucks it's a terrible job yeah um and then yeah a bunch of other stuff so it it really it really depends on like when you're hitting into the market um it's something that i always say for developers is try to build a portfolio build something do something um make it kind of cool and that'll get a lot of traction for you like genuinely do stuff on GitHub, make it so your code can be seen. One of the most frustrating but understandable things is when someone applies and they have nothing to show at all because they're like, oh, I've been working professionally yeah. in the industry for NDA'd. 10, 15 years. And and just like your developers, a lot of my stuff, not maybe all of it, but the stuff that is there is open source contribution. And I don't want to share that account or whatever. Like I, there's nothing for me to see. So it's like, okay, well now I'm going to have to get you to do some stuff. Um, so if you if you don't have experience to throw at people, figure, figure, you have you have your three things right. You can throw portfolio, as in like things you've made, some examples of your work. You can throw experience. You can throw education. Um, each one of those are entirely viable. And I know myself definitely, but a lot of other recruiters these days are looking quite heavily into um, experience and portfolio, and less into education. Education is really expensive. Not everyone can afford it, but some of those people that can't afford it might be really, really good, and it's worth looking into them. Uh, my entire employment history can be found on LinkedIn. I My first job was as a day camp counselor during my exchange to Quebec <laughs> at Parc et Terrain de Jeu. I was like a, a, an assistant camp counselor. I didn't speak French very well, but boy, did I ever try hard. <laughs> I learned some of the songs and everything. Wow. Je tape les mains, tac-a-lac, tac-a-lac, je tape les mains, tac-a-lac, AJ, tac-a-lac. rip them apart. Yeah. Uh, go, AJ, go. Whatever. <laughs> um, then I was a lifeguard and swimming lessons instructor from 2004 to 2005 at the Maple Ridge Parks and Leisure Leisure Center. Um, that sort of faded away because I went to school 
uh, in 2005, and it was not realistic to be working while also attending UBC full time and commuting a total of about Ooh. three and a half hours a day yeah. from Eastern Maple Ridge to UBC mm. um, at the like west end of Vancouver. Then uh, I was recruited during my first year of school as a student works painting franchisee. So technically I was self-employed during this period, even though I didn't fully understand that at the time. I thought that I kind of had the backing of a larger organization behind me. In practice, though, if someone doesn't pay you, they do absolutely nothing to sort it out. You are, you are essentially an independent owner operator. So thanks for that, student works. Um, then I quit student works. Definitely abandoned my contractual obligation out of both. Well, this was a period of, um, I guess it's probably fair to call it depression, even if it wasn't diagnosed. It's pretty much textbook case. Uh, this was this was not working for me. Um, so between how I was feeling already about the, the job and the feeling of abandonment when we had that payment issue and them just kind of being like, see you later, I, I walked away. And I went to work at NCIX because I loved just like talking about computers and helping people configure computers. And I only lasted six months because I went back to student work. See how these overlap a little bit? So I started at NCIX. Then I knew I had to go back to student works in the summer. Um, so I was only there till May. And then when I came back, they actually didn't send me back to the store. So you can see here, here's how it went. Uh, December to May, I worked at NCIX part-time. Then from May to June, I was at Student Works. Then I walked away. And in July, I was back at NCIX. So I was the PC Systems Business Unit Manager. I configured the PCs. I ended up actually building a lot of the PCs, uh, including a junior employee. This is Ivan. <laughs> um, I <laughs> Uh, man, what else? I, I filled this out like really well because I was updating this at a time when it wasn't uh, certain that this whole Linus Media Group thing was going to work out and I was trying to get a job. Uh, the There's an LMG clip of the, I think, of the time that I tried to apply for Amazon. Uh, that took place during this time. Man, can you imagine what a different life I'd have if they had hired me as their like, it was like social media video coordinator or something like that. Like I was an absolute dream fit for the job and i never even got a con like contacted back i was like yeah like i these there's these channels with like like over a million subscribers. i think i already had a gold play button at ncix for ncix tech tips and like can you imagine not hiring that person for your like social video role and i think it was because the job requirements were that you had to have a bachelor's degree and i didn't yeah, see, that's so stupid. I probably never even made it to a real human being. Yeah, just, I think yeah. I would have been a catch. I think y'all missed out. So anyway, I think I probably could have done some social media video stuff for you. That's a that's a Luke Tech Tips dark timeline. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so then I was promoted to product manager, lasted in that role for six years. I was also like a category manager as part of this. Man, I was like, I was actually like pretty good at this. Hold on, sorry about that. Um, cut daily POs, managed a personal product portfolio from zero dollars to two million dollars of monthly revenue. I I I rejuvenated a lot of troubled lines. Uh, NCIX was selling like I kid you not, like twenty MSI motherboards a month when I took over that line, and we were like over like hundreds a week by the time I was done with it. Uh, OCZ was selling basically nothing uh, when I took over that line. And they were our biggest SSD and DRAM vendor by the time I was done with it. They didn't go under until I was I was out, so that wasn't my problem, Maybe thankfully. that's why. Um, but uh, no, 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 I had nothing to do with that. Maybe it's your fault. No, no. Um, <laughs> then uh, I have some like other roles. I had multiple jobs at NCIX. I was YouTube video social media project coordinator. See, I did some stuff. Total of 85 million video views and 325,000 subscribers. Okay, apparently I did not have a million uh, subscribers at that point. Oh, no, that's right. That happened way later. We were at the Langley House. Never mind, never mind. With less than $10,000 invested, let me tell you, let me tell you, I buffered the crap out of that. There was far less than $10,000 invested. I was trying to account for every possible equipment expenditure that we could have had. We spent nothing 
on NCIX Tech Tips. Um, and then category manager for a couple of years. So that's basically overseeing product managers. Um, so yeah, I worked with OCZ, Intel, NVIDIA, AMD, Antec, Corsair, Asus, MSI, EVGA, and many, many more. Um, that was pretty cool. I was by, by the time I left, I was one of the most senior people in the company, even though I was only, what, is this, what does this work out to? 20, 26 years old. Dig at him more? I, why? Dig at me? Yeah, so people, someone's telling me to dig at you. The only okay, so one piece of feedback that chat gave you is that you're not supposed to have stuff that far back on your LinkedIn, but he's also not actively looking for a job. Yeah, and like, so who cares? And like, honestly, I well, what am I supposed to just have this job? This I've point, been here for almost ten years. Yeah, so at this point, I think basically, yeah. What? What do you mean you're not supposed to like? Like you shouldn't have your like painter stuff on there. Oh yeah, that's stupid. Yeah. I just I was memeing. Yeah. I was just like, you know what? For, okay. So part of it was that I was wanting to get a job. The other part of it was that I like I used to keep a diary when I was in high school. And it's like it's pretty cool to go back and look at that stuff. So my 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 concept here when I was creating this was that it would be as complete as possible. More as much for my own entertainment as anything else. So I put as much information into like the NCIX stuff, which I obviously remembered a lot better because it was current. I put as much information as I thought I could put in there without, um, you know, disclose it without breaking my NDA with NCIX, like disclosing business secrets. So I have sales growth in units while remaining excellent customer satisfaction and achieving GP margin targets from 2006 to 2012, a 440%. That's my, that's the sales growth of my lines. Um, and I'm not going to lie. I spent actual work time digging into our reports in our internal system to compile this for my LinkedIn. Wow. While I was seeking wow. employment elsewhere. Fired. Bad. Well, Bad they, Linus. Well, they didn't fire me. They asked me for six months notice, actually, is what they actually did <laughs> when I tried to quit. <laughs> Something like that. That's a lot. That's a lot of notice. Yeah. Well, I was trying to negotiate for buying this channel that you're watching this video on yeah. for a dollar, right? So yeah. that was a whole thing. Yeah. Um, Twitch staff is watching me. What? Twitch staff watching. Multi-streaming. Get out. Wait, what? Get out. Why are we why are we multi-streaming to multiple platforms? Luke, why would you build now. a tool to do this? I think they don't care anymore. Oh, well. You're get allowed owned, to stream Twitch. to other platforms, but not at the same time. Uh, get owned. That's Twitch. probably worth explaining. Should we explain no. that? Get wrecked, Twitch. Um really? Are you gonna be like that about it? <laughs> Wait, what do you want to explain? Sorry? I want to explain why we're allowed to do that. Oh, because we signed our contract really early? We Well, it's not just really early. It's not early and not later. It's at an exact moment in time. When they were trying to MCN? Yes. So we've had a lot of people ask us over the years, hey, what's the deal? Um, so in the early days of the WAN show, it was, hey, uh, non-gaming streams aren't allowed on Twitch. What are you guys doing? Now IRL exists, so no, there's lots of talk shows on Twitch. Nobody asks about that anymore. But now the big thing is, hey, you guys multi-stream. You guys stream to YouTube, Twitch, your own float plane thing. We actually even stream to Facebook now all concurrently. And uh, you guys know you're breaking Twitch's TOS, right? Um, the answer is that we joined Twitch at a time when serendipitously Twitch was looking. So I, so I wanted to have some kind of foothold in live. I, I saw that live was this thing and some people were really successful I, in it. I think it was my idea more than yours. Your idea? Mr. Like Guy. the first Q&A? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, I pushed you to do it. Did you? Because of the car talks. Well, I you convinced me. Yeah. So however we however we came to it, um it was clear that live was going to be a force on the internet. I had no idea. Um and it's probable that when we talked about it, I would have said my hesitation is that I have no idea what this looks like. It was very outside of our wheelhouse. Yeah. There's actually a big difference between VOD and live. Yeah, I have no idea how we make this make any sense. I have no idea how we make this make any money. I have no idea how to do this. Uh, there were a lot of challenges. And so we we started out um, with just like like a Q&A and Twitch was really, I mean, YouTube, I don't think had live streaming yet at that don't point. So. Yep. So we started out doing some live streams on Twitch and then it over time, became the WAN show and 
after a while, what happened was we were this kind of like unique situation. I think Luke like knew some people at Twitch, which was how we didn't get kicked off for streaming non-gaming stuff in the early days. That, yeah. That's how that went down, right? Yeah. Then things went to another level because Twitch... It, I will also say that it helped a lot because one of the reasons why they had the whole like you got to do games thing was because it was a question about moderation. Right. So they weren't against us doing it they were also a little because they didn't want other people to start doing it because we were doing it because they didn't want to deal with the moderation of that Mm. and all this other stuff. But it was, they were just like, yeah, it's fine. (laughs) We want you to do it anyways. It's fine. Got it. So anyway, um, because right, because part of the conversation was that they did want to branch out of gaming. Like they had that kind of in the back of their minds, right? So at some point they approached us and they wanted to get into the MCN business. So like doing brand deals and getting like a portfolio of, of like YouTube creators uh, and basically, you know, skimming some of your revenue to fund their efforts to go get brand deals to hopefully sell ads against your videos and bring you brand deals that more than outweigh the cost of joining the MCN. That was the theory of the MCN model in practice. What it actually turned out to be was a big grift where MCNs skimmed revenue from you. And that was about it. Um I don't think that that was the intention of any of the people we dealt with at Twitch, but one of the things that happened as part of that negotiation was YouTube streaming did exist by that point. And we basically said, um, actually we cannot be a, a primarily YouTube centric brand and company and channel and be exclusively streaming to Twitch. That's, and if you're our YouTube MCN, how does that make any sense for you to not allow us to stream on YouTube? Yeah. Clearly, this is stupid. Yeah. And they basically went, oh, okay, well, we'll, we'll get you a carve out for that. Uh, so that's how, that's how it went down. Yeah. So we, we are allowed to multi-stream. I believe the subject of our contract was brought up at some point years later um, where there was a desire to un- uh, make it a unicorn and i basically said nope and that was the end <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much it all my uh my I... apologies for not remembering that you pushed to do live i i remember no it's fine i remember being hesitant i remember recognizing that that was something that like we needed to have some kind of foothold in, I, but I don't remember if you were, I don't remember you being the one who planted the seed. I think that's the reason why that was my first show on camera. It was because mm. I was pushing for live a bunch. Yeah, I I'm don't. not certain about that though. Maybe, well, no, maybe that was part of us like figuring out how to make live make any that sense. That might've been it too. Cause I, Cause I remember it being just like, exhausting and and not interesting content to just sit and do q a because people would just keep asking the same questions yeah so maybe that was where it came from i didn't have a car and we would very often work past when the buses would run so linus would drive me home all the time um and we would have these conversations on the drive home and i would often find myself sitting there thinking like man i think a lot of people would want to hear this because we're talking about like the tech news of the week essentially and all this other type of stuff. Like, I, I think this is a lot of decently interesting conversation. We should put it somewhere. It doesn't really make sense to be a VOD. We should have a live show. Um, and then, yeah, then that's where the Q&A stream came from. Gilmore D asks, what happened that week where you were banned from Twitch a few years ago? I don't remember that. What? Did we ever get banned from Twitch? I don't remember that. Yeah, sorry, I don't know. Uh, Did you Dude asks, does LMG still have anything to do with full screen um, MCN? That's a good question. I actually need to check Social Blade to find out if they are our MCN. So I will get back to you in one moment. It says here who your MCN is. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think we I think we unlinked with them a while back. And it was basically, I, I don't remember the, the terms around which we, we parted with them, but our, our deal with full screen pretty much was not very favorable to full screen. And yeah. in the same manner, they kept trying to renegotiate it with us. And we kept saying, um, actually, no, because a signed contract is a signed contract. And at some point, they basically went, well, okay, you need to go 
and we kind of went, well, we're taking our data with us because you guys may not know this, but the monetization data, like your historical monetization data on your channel can be lost in the transition between MCNs or from an MCN back to just a vanilla YouTube uh, channel. And uh, so there was some technical details to sort out for our transition. So it ended up taking quite a lot of time, but uh, we are we are apparently not with full screen anymore. Uh, frankly, they never really did much for us one way no, or the other. They and we sure didn't. Never really did anything for them either. So That's absolutely true. <laughs> yeah. Should we do a couple of merch messages? Sure. Yes. <laughs> Delayed reaction. <laughs> First question here we have from Laura. Hello, Linus and Luke. I love the show. Keep up the great content. But I was wondering if other than GPUs, what PC parts what PC parts you should avoid when buying secondhand. Oh, I don't think you should avoid GPUs at all. I so I read this earlier. That was going to be a strong part of my response. Too. Oh, sorry, sorry, um, sorry. No, no. I'm just saying I agree. Um, and I I wouldn't necessarily avoid buying any PC parts secondhand. There are things that I would be way more careful about. Mostly motherboards storage. and storage. Secondhand storage is just secondhand storage is pretty sketch. Often not worth it. There are cases where we've done. I've put secondhand storage in our like production like editing server uh, but but those were enterprise grade drives you could actually go into the drives and see what their power on hours were see what their bytes written were they're, they're a savvy shopper can buy secondhand storage in certain cases yeah. but for the average consumer it is not something that i would recommend yeah you have to this is something that i run into trying to buy secondhand storage all the time too is you like shop around you find a good deal and you're like okay sweet and then you go look at how much it would cost to just buy a new one. And it's like the same price. I don't know what's up with that. I don't get it. But the storage secondhand market has always been kind of trash. So you're probably not even, it's probably not even worth doing at all. Uh, but if you do, make sure you're very careful about it. Um, and that should be because your budget is like really tight. Also with stuff like motherboards, make sure you inspect them closely. And if the person's like, no, then don't buy it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, for shrug IDK says you should buy like 20 to 50 used mining GPUs on eBay, have the lab test them, uh, running them 24 seven for gaming and see how they perform. That's a cool idea. We already did it. It's coming out soon. We bought 20. Um, so stay tuned. Um, but, but no, if it works, it works. And buyer protections on these used platforms like eBay are so good now that if it doesn't work, there is a strong chance that you will be able to get your money back. So, uh, yeah, really the big one for me is storage. Um, I'm a little less wary of used motherboards than Luke is, but he's not wrong either. Especially because a used motherboard, it can be not obvious that it's bad immediately. Whereas with a GPU, it's actually usually obvious very quickly. You run some kind of intensive application like Fermark or a game benchmark or something like that, and you should see artifacting. Or if you're monitoring the clock speeds, you should see them dip. You should see something go wrong pretty much right away. And if it doesn't go wrong right away, then it probably has some life left in it. As much as when it was new, okay, probably not, but some. Yep. Next question here is from Lorenzo. Has there been a specific moment when either of you fe felt you realized you'd made it big as YouTubers? I think there was two for me. One of them when was... you went to hold on. I, I like I like answering Luke's questions for him. Uh, I forget I for, I forget what stupid event it was. Was it? It was like I think it was PAX East or something, where it wasn't like the attendees that kept like crowding around you. It was the other like uh, creator influencers. Oh, Twitch. TwitchCon. That was a that was a weird experience. Oh, that wasn't one of the ones you were thinking. Um, it, oh, so okay. it it th this one specifically said you realized you made it. So I I thought of really early things. Oh, I see, I see, I yeah. see. There's there's definitely like big moments where I'm like, okay, this is another like level. Yeah, I remember like you talking about that one. Like that one was very cool, but very weird because okay, so uh, events like packs, it's pretty common 
I mean, maybe not these days. I haven't been to a PAX in a long time and I'm not on as much content, so people might not recognize me much. But back when I was hosting a lot of stuff, it was very common that it was like almost difficult to walk around because so many people would come up and say hi and that was a cool experience and, and I'm happy to say hi to everybody. I go to Twitch Con different group of people nobody knows who he is we're not twitch people so much we do wan show but we don't do anything else so none of the attendees know who the heck i am but there's creators breaking their attendee lines to leave to come say hi because they know who i am because i mean they need streaming computers yeah it was so cool like it was sweet ammunition was like yeah you like taught me how to build computers i was like shut up i I met up with uh with day nine mr sean plot uh, someone who I've been a fan of for a long time. And he was like, oh, you're lies tech dips. Whoa. And I'm like, that hurts my brain. I, <laughs> no part of my, my brain was ready for him to like know who we are and also yeah. be like super impressed. So that was, that was sweet. He's super, super nice dude um, on and off camera. Um, but yeah, that was, that was a bit of an eye opener for sure. I think my, my two like first moments, um, was I remember the first packs that we went to I was in the indie booth I've told you this one a bunch of times I was in the indie booth and I was doing my like quick sales pitch for why the guy should interview with me yeah um and I say like how many subscribers we have and he's like well if you want a million you should probably like interview with me because we weren't at a million yet and I was pissed and I I'm pretty sure I just left I don't, I don't remember exactly what happened. Brandon might remember it, but I was like really mad. Wow. Um, Cause I wasn't even Big trying to say energy. I wasn't even trying to say like, you know, like we're the best. I was just yeah. like, we're a decently sized channel. We're at the indie booth. I can give you some coverage. Like, do you want to jump on? Um, and he's like, me, me, me. I was like, what the heck? I was not a fan of that. Um, and then we broke a million. So like, Breaking that first million had that extra punch for me because I'm like, screw that guy. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. Uh, and then the other one was when my my Twitter follower account surpassed the combined follower account for all of the hosts of the radio show that I listened to when I was growing up. Okay. Yeah. That's something. I was like, okay, wow. That's yeah. Cool. Very few radio hosts have managed to successfully make it over to social media. I remember noticing that back when I was listening to like sports talk radio a lot, uh, maybe I guess a few years back. I just like I'd be like, yeah, these guys are like huge. They're on the radio. They have all these people like calling in. I'd go on Twitter and they have like 900 followers and stuff. And like they've been on the air for like 15 years. What is yeah. this? But just completely different audiences, right? Yeah. Like you got your boomer radio listeners, and then you got your young Twitter users, and a line between them, a, a solid line. Yeah. Um, I think for me. There are, I mean, there's a number of big ones that stand out. I mean, I'd say, I'd say getting our, our first, you know, uh, check that covered our monthly expenses as a company was a really big one. I would say that getting a YouTube representative was huge because not just me personally, but tech as a category had been largely shoved to the side at that point. Um, getting as a, an escalation point from that one, getting invited to top creator summit was pretty cool for me. Um, the biggest one though, and I know that this is going to sound like a cheesy answer, but it's the truth. And I'm pretty sure Luke will remember me saying it at the time. Um, probably the biggest one for me, because the goal has always been, I want to be a real company, right? And being a real company is more than just building fame and reputation and wealth for yourself. It's, uh, building oh, it for the entire team. And so one of the biggest moments for me was when I forget who exactly it was that was like the wow moment, but it was someone relatively peripheral on our team getting like recognized on the street in my, in my presence and someone being like, whoa, I'm a huge fan. Um, where I kind of went, Okay, that's what I want. Like, I want to be the, I want to be like, like, you know, thinking like Warcraft 3, right? Like, I want to be the hero that has like the aura that makes everyone around me a superstar. (laughs) Because that, that is next level. So that was, that was, that's always been something in my mind. Um, And I, I felt that that was really, really exciting. Last weekend when we were, when we were kayaking, we went past those guys and one of them recognized you, right? Like 
I can't go anywhere at this point. And I'm not. I'm honestly. I'm not trying to like be We're like. literally oh, on I'm the so ocean. Cool. <laughs> I'm in a kayak in the water, and someone paddles past and is like, "Sup, Linus?" Yeah. Did you hear what happened after? No. Him and his friends look at me and, not super quietly, but not to me, are like, "Is that Luke?" And then they all just stare at me, and no one says anything. <laughs> And I just go by. <laughs> None of them even like tried. <laughs> They're just like, uh. you're clearly you got that intimidation aura. <laughs> it's so weird. I don't know. Oh That's man, funny. I don't uh, know how to deal with it anymore because I've been inside and also off camera. So like at the at the screwdriver pop up, um, someone introdu introduced their partner and they were like, "They're so excited to see you. You're their favorite one or whatever." And my whole everything was just like. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know how to respond to this properly i actually felt really bad afterwards but hey i, I mean know. with all the luke for ceo uh threads <laughs> on reddit and stuff lately it seems like it seems like the luke fandom is strong you yeah. know what i was i was uh i don't know if you noticed when you were over but uh, all the RGB is set up in the shelves in my streaming room, and I have like a bunch of memorabilia that I've always just had boxed the away. Mouse pad. You saw it. That's what <laughs> I, I actually love that. That's there. There, I have a slick tech tips mouse pad that was produced by wasn't it one of the four mods or this, something? It's it's a super old school reference to an to one. I think it's the first April Fools that the forum had, where we changed the. I wasn't even the one that did it, but we we changed the whole forum to slick tech tips. As like an April Fool's joke, um, and it, it went like really far. If I remember, it went yeah. like into the ACP and everything. Like yeah. it was like, yeah, like probably more work than it was worth. Kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but that was from back then. Uh, yeah, that was great. Uh, there, oh, wow, there was something I was gonna say. Oh yeah, right. This is a perfect segue into um, one of our other topics. Maybe I haven't made it at all. Uh, Forbes just released their top <laughs> top creators <laughs> list of 2022. These 49 social media savants and one dog are redefining celebrity for our connected age. Yeah. Uh, money, fame, maxi. That's what it takes to qualify for Forbes' first ever ranking of the most powerful influencers on the internet. None of which you have. They're compelling. Their compelling, often quirky content is consumed by millions, and the world's top brands happily spend millions to sponsor it. Um, okay, blah, 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 blah. Some, fa blah, some fantastic blah, creators blah, blah, on here, and yeah. I'm going to let you finish, but yeah. Linus is not on it. No, yeah, I'm not on it. As you scroll through. Uh, where the hell is the list? Uh, here we go. Number one, I can't believe they still haven't changed this picture, even though he asked them to. Yeah, he, he replied with a tweet that has like over 10,000 upvotes being like, hey, could you please use a different picture? Yeah. Uh, so here's the list. They've got your earnings. They've got your total followers. He also corrected them on his total follower count. They had it not right. Yeah, it's like very not right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> average engagement, whatever that means. It's not 100% clear how they calculate this. Entrepreneurship score. Three. Um, out of what? What is it out of? I, there's more details in the doc. We'll we'll go through this a little bit. But the point was not necessarily that I I wanted to, um, I mean to be clear. Yeah, Mr. Beast probably belongs at number one on the list. Hold, uh, hold on, every single person got a three for entrepreneurship score except for Jake Paul, and he got a two. What is this scale? <laughs> Okay, I don't know, but let's go ahead. Uh, oh. Markiplier only gets an entrepreneurship score of one. Is one better? Oh, what? Is one worse? Uh, XQC is at three. So up in the, okay, to be clear, these? up in the top here, everything's looking like pretty, pretty up and up, you know? Uh, uh, Patrick uh, Simondak? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, Patrick Starr, I guess? Uh, fifteen million dollars for earnings. That's a freaking ton of money to be making on on social media. Oh, there's gigantic. You know, eleven point seven million followers. Okay, you got Jack Septic guy with sixteen point eight million dollars a year. Look at this average engagement: ten point two nine percent. There's a lot of people that absolutely belong on this list. We got Marquez in here, but then there's some really really weird stuff as you start getting down to the end where it almost kind of feels like, and I don't want this to be a knock against anyone who was included on the list, but 
top 50? I don't know. I don't know. There's there's people on here with literally 1 million followers. Which is like really solid. Like you're And doing that it. puts you above Lily Pons with a total of 94 million. And what is this estimated earnings for Lily Pons of 3 million? Are you for real? <laughs> Are you actually for real? Like, do you actually think Lily Pons only made $3 million in 2021? Are you serious? Hold on. Maybe she has fallen off a lot since the last time I looked into her, in which case she probably shouldn't be on the list at all. So I suspect she hasn't. But let's let's bring this up. Oh, no. She's still... Oh, actually, okay. She's, she's peered out a fair bit. But she's still putting up pretty respectable numbers, anywhere from 15 to 20 million views a month. Um, that is a lot less than I, I had thought it was going to be. She, last time I kind of looked into her, she was doing like 100 plus million views a month. Um, in which case, okay, so the, like what's the... Basically, what I'm trying to figure out is what's the rationale here? And the point I'm trying to make is that... It appears to be kind of random. It appears to be a list of, uh, of, of influencers that the author or authors just like. Which could be completely fine, but shouldn't be named the way it is and ranked the way it is, if that's the case. If it's top 50, you're going to have to have some, you're going to have to have some kind of rationale for it. So let's, let's get into this a little bit. Um, if it's like top 50 creators we think you should check out moving into 2023, that's a different article. That's a totally different article, and that one's totally fine. But that doesn't get as many clicks yeah. as the top 50. And it doesn't get people talking about it like us. And it Way to go, people... Forbes. You got your clicks. Good job. So um, I, so let's go back to the doc for a little bit here. The, so it's the most successful, influential, and entrepreneurial people in a given field, in this case, social media. And Linus was nowhere to be found. Uh you don't. I, I added this to the doc. To be Shrimp. clear, I wasn't the one who put that in. Bum, I actually bum, don't bum. care because these lists are meaningless. I might as well be on a list of random YouTubers uh, from my point of view. Because here are some questions. How did Forbes calculate these these uh, the rankings? Earnings figures are for calendar 2021 and are Forbes estimates. Uh, clout measures not just the sheer number of followers, but also their engagement, as indicated by likes, shares, and comments. For follower count, they summed followers across platforms, and this count includes people who follow creators on multiple platforms. Finally, each creator was given an entrepreneurship rank of between one and three, rewarding people who founded companies, Scale. started investment shops, or otherwise structured deals in creative and lucrative ways. So at the top of the list... Congrats, Jimmy. 2021 earnings, 54 million total followers, whatever. We already went through this. Makes sense. But Very we'll, inaccurate, but makes sense. I will say this. Whatever estimates they're using for revenue, and this is something that I've noticed on previous Forbes uh, re like earnings estimate lists about YouTubers. These are people I know personally, right? So I know for a fact that the earnings for Jimmy are wrong. That is not accurate. Uh, it's also, it's not only not accurate, but even if it was accurate, even if that number meant something, like let's say for the sake of argument that 54 million was his revenue for that year, Jimmy invests heavily in his business. Oh, hard, yeah. I mean, Absolutely. we've seen it. He yeah. hires people, builds sets, um, brings in experts. Just, just the Squid Game pro uh, uh, project. Yeah insane millions of dollars yeah like, he spends on his business so if you are so depending on what the goal of your list is if your goal is the top grossing youtubers well then by all means jimmy belongs on your list but what i suspect based on knowing him and having a little bit of inside baseball is that compared to some much much smaller operations where it's just a, a, a one man or one woman band or one person band, right? Compared to those, he's probably not as profitable. Yeah, because he's he believes super. At least as far as my, I've never talked to him, but as far as my understanding goes, he believes super heavily in reinvestment. He reinvest, reinvest, reinvest. That's 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 Jimmy to a T, right? Like he's not trying to make money today. He's trying to build the biggest, hugest, most epic 
influencer machine that the world has ever seen. It's just, it's a completely different objective. I'm not saying, oh, Jimmy sucks at business. He didn't, he wasn't as profitable in 2021 as some other influencer. That's not what I'm saying at all. He's just, he's just got his eye on a completely different prize from most people. So what is, what is the, what is, so that's the first question. What is this number? Jimmy is Mr. Beast, guys. Uh, What is this number? Is it revenue? Is it profit? If it's profit, what are you basing it on? You have no idea. No idea. And like, I remember like as a, as a teenager, young adult, I used to read these like, you know, celebrity net worth click listicles, you know, and, and people, people get so, people get so interested in like the, who's the richest person in the world uh, you know, is it Bezos? Is it Gates? Is it this guy? Is it that lady? Whatever, right? Um, but what I realized after seeing estimates of myself is that the people writing these articles, in pretty much every case I've seen, have zero special insight and knowledge whatsoever. Zero. You could go compile the list yourself and probably do as good of a job. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, this is great. They didn't edit his total follower count yet either. He said our YouTube has more than 200 plus million subs alone. Yeah. His total follower count is like wildly off, especially because don't, don't they even say like, yeah, you're going to have people that follow on multiple platforms. So they should have just totaled all of his. And if anything, which is just an insane number. If anything, his is one that I would be, I would be more willing to, to just add up together because so many of his additional YouTube subscribers are on other language channels where there probably is very little subscriber overlap with the main channel. Um, he also, oh, I didn't see this, but apparently he also questioned the entrepreneurship score, claiming that people who had less than 10 employees had the same ranking as people who had 100. Uh, yeah, that's pretty stupid. Uh, this is a note it's from... a really weird scale. One to three is an extremely odd scale. What does that even mean? That's it means basically weird. nothing. Uh, Adam noted that uh, the list seems to be a bit of a mess. In the accompanying blog post, Forbes states that Charlie D'Amelio is at the top of the list, but the list itself puts Mr. Beast at the top. So that's cool. Uh, they credit Sophie D with founding an agency that our writer, Adam, couldn't find evidence of it actually existing. They are missing some massive massive channels like Vlad and Nikki who have 88 million subs. It's a kid's channel or like Nastya, which is a 100 million subscriber children's channel. And this isn't like a children's channel, like, like, like Coco Melon, where it's like, I don't know. Is that, is that really, is that really a channel? Is that really an influencer? Is that a company, you know? Um, this is like, like, as far as I can tell, Nastya at least started as like a family run, just like, kids channel kind of like ryan's toy reviews um there are some highlights from the list uh, marquez is on there as number 18 forums claims that he posts reviews of everything from video games to drones to smartphones i don't remember the last time marquez covered a drone but that's... or video games yeah or, um, or video games I, I think that was edited i i specifically try to read through that part let me try to find it uh they've got uh... oh man i should do an earnings estimate for Mr. Marquez Brownlee. Oh, I no, it's I still could... there. Oh, yep, I'm which, which posts screen. reviews of everything from video games to drones to smartphones. Yeah, Marquez reviews a lot of video games. Big gamer, Marquez. It would have been cooler to shout him out for his Ultimate Frisbee stuff. Well, uh, yeah. Which is, I know that's not on the YouTube channel. You would have had like... to actually know anything about the guy, though. Yeah, fair you enough. wouldn't have been able to just... I think that's super cool. You though. wouldn't I have been able to just clips. crap out whatever popped into your mind and put it in your listicle. Yeah. Like that's ridiculous. Uh, is is PewDiePie even on the list? Uh, I didn't actually scroll through the whole thing. So, oh, PewDiePie is apparently missing. Let PewDiePie me... is mentioned in uh, in in uh, Jacksepticeye's section. Because <laughs> let me tell you something. I don't know. I, I've never spoken to Felix. Okay, I don't know him. I don't have any insider insight into into him. Um, but what I will tell you is based on what I know about mobile game, the mobile game industry. Big money. Big mo YouTuber simulator. Looking at the numbers that that app was doing when it launched, he never has to lift a finger again. That wasn't his only game. I didn't even know that. Yep. Yeah. So like, but that's the thing. 
is the people compiling these lists, they have absolutely no concept whatsoever of where the where like who's doing big money deals. And that doesn't even that doesn't even get into some of the some of the sketchy deals that some influencers are doing. Like there's influencers earning huge amounts of money, essentially grifting their audiences with like crypto scams. Um, there was that whole uh, who was that? Who was that guy that got caught uh, promoting a gambling site that it turned out that he ran? Oh, the, the Counter Strike one. I don't. Uh, I don't remember the guy's name. Frankly, yeah, you know either. what? Let's not even bother I don't, saying. I don't want to say the wrong one. Doesn't deserve it. Yeah. Oh, um, true. So you know, yeah, probably, probably earning pretty, pretty good money. Not on the list. I mean, okay, maybe there's an argument to be made for ill-gotten gains not ending up on the list. Are there like any streamers? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. XQC is in there. Oh, right. He is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Bunny the dog is on there. Earnings of $1 million. Total followers, 9.3. Average engagement, 5.85. Entrepreneurship score, 1. What? What is What is that even? Why? How are you even on that list? Like, I'm, again, I'm not going to say I should be on the list, but I should definitely be on the list before the dog. That I'll say. <laughs> um, I don't know. Our discussion Pretty question cool is where does Linus Sebastian fall by these metrics? 51. 51. <laughs> I don't know, because the metrics are so bad. Like the, the entrepreneurship score, one to three? <laughs> what is it even based off? They don't break it down. Uh, like Mr. Beast pointed out, like it doesn't seem to necessarily be based on anything. Their numbers are wrong anyways. Um, and, and to properly spec this out, you would have to try to actually spend an amount of time trying to get accurate numbers, which it doesn't seem like they really did. Oh, people are saying position number 69. I'd, I'd accept that. Yeah. Perfect. Um, people are talking about someone, Bella Porch, they estimate at 5 million, sorry, Bella Porch, they estimate at Five no shot. million? No shot. <laughs> and that's true. I just looked it up. No shot what? There's no chance that's true. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay, hold on a second. Is that too old? Am I so... Cap? Ah. Ah, I did it. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> I'm so proud. I don't think I've ever said that before. I'm one of the fellow kids now. What are even these numbers? Yeah, they're just all stupid. There's no way. Oh wait! Oh oh okay okay sorry. Uh, it's in it's in TikTok mode. Hold on. It's in what? Uh, Social Blade. I was I was confused. Oh, okay. Uh, wow, that's stupid. Yeah, she's huge. Oh yeah. Like yeah, huge. Yeah. There's no way five million total earnings is accurate. <laughs> You should probably educate yourself a little bit. She's also like, yeah, it's a uh, da, 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 da. Um, build a bleep uh, reach number. We have a button. Build a bitch. Yeah, yeah. It's number 58 on Billboard's pop chart in May 2021. She has done deals with luxury fashion house. I mean, mind you, we're reading this. Why are we reading this? Because it's clearly made it's up. Probably just wrong. But okay, even there, if anything, crappy deflated information, just that. There's like no way she makes only that amount. Like she's a titan. Come on. Yeah. I like that's know. just disrespectful. Yeah. Five million. Get but that, real. that's true about a lot of these people, man. I don't know. Like yeah. so many people on this list, like it's fantastic that you made it on the list, but they probably said some junk about you that's not accurate and not as cool as you actually are. And that that's unfortunate. Also, there's no way that... Uh, I don't know. The fact, that they, the fact that they present this information as fact, I think is what offends me the most. Uh, Ryan's Toy Reviews AdSense revenue, merchandise, and proprietary line of toys helped him make very adult money in 2021, $27 million. They say this like it's a fact. You have no idea. Yeah. You have no idea. So he, Someone says she probably made $5 million during this segment. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> yeah, but, not quite. But... but <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. You might be just as far off as Forbes though. She's doing she's doing okay money. I I you know what? I should see if I can if I can do a more accurate estimate for Marquez and then I'll just ask him if it's right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I could get close. I'm pretty sure this ain't it, chief. I, I think what he needs to do is start reviewing video games. Yeah, then maybe he could then maybe one day he could get maybe there. one day he'll make it. Yeah. <laughs> if he tries hard enough. <laughs> Oh my goodness! He'll he'll be joke. the he'll be the breakout he'll be the breakout hit or the breakout uh, creator we need. Yeah. Just you know, if if he could just keep at it and review more video review games, more video games. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's really honestly, oh, the video game content is just too ignored by his channel. Yeah, Shroud's not in there. Some very few major streamers. There's streamers making like ludicrous amounts of money and compared to an operation like ours where we actually have like 80 people on staff a lot of them are very lean operations there's also a bunch of streamers that are really getting actually very very good at the vod game mm. where they will make produced videos live on stream where it's like you you can barely even tell that it's that they're live they often won't even show the chat and they're they're talking to the camera as if they're actually live, all that type of stuff. Oh, apparently Shroud is in there. Sorry. I bet. And they're they're doing both and they're doing yeah. it really well. Like that's actually a very interesting thing to follow in the creator space right now is these streamers starting to just spread out into different content forms. So they're not just doing one thing. It's 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 genuinely very interesting. And so not what really entrepreneurship score would they get for that? You know, <laughs> uh, it's hard because when you look at the difference between one, two and three, how much do you have to do to be able to jump up one of those? You have 33% of the population. I don't even think it's split that way. But you have 33% of it in each one of the numbered gaps. So, like, what the heck does that even mean? It's impossible. Ludwig has monetized this format. That's true. It's also true about a number of other creators, though. He's not the only one doing it. Um, and it's 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 genuinely really interesting. It's big brain. It takes some work. It takes a lot of planning. It takes a lot there was already a lot of work that went into stream preparation back in the day but i think in our current space for stream creators that are trying to do stream and vod i think there is a monstrous amount of stream prep that people don't necessarily think about because these creators are so professional honestly and good at hiding that type of stuff and just making it feel like you're just live hanging out even though there was clearly if you really think about it a lot of work that goes into this stuff um also, again, I'm not saying I should be on the list because there are at least 50 people that are like way huger, like way, way bigger. But compared to the dog, okay, it's the <laughs> dog that I that I take exception <laughs> with. Okay, so what was the dog's earnings? A million dollars or uh, something I'm like that? To, as far as I can tell, out. this is a total revenue number. Okay, and like, look, look, look. I'm I'm not saying you know you know oh YouTuber influencer flex. All I'm saying is, okay, with the number of employees we have, okay, times the minimum wage in BC, okay, so I am paying at least uh, fifteen dollars and sixty-five cents an hour. Actually, there's there's about um, there's about somewhere in the neighborhood of ten to fifteen percent overhead on top of that, you know, for like uh, EI and all that kind of all that kind of nonsense. I think it's actually higher, but Yvonne would know better than me, and she's not here. Oh, there's Shroud. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's at least how much I pay per hour. Okay. Times uh, there are two thousand eighty hours in in a year. Two thousand eighty work hours. Okay. Times eighty. Okay. I think that I beat the dog for revenue. Assuming that you guys are all getting paychecks. No, nah, I just, I, well, we definitely all get minimum wage. Yeah. That that's is, 7 million that in dog entire... dollars. No, <laughs> no, that's not how it works. Wait, no, no, no. That, that would, is that species would mean, bias. That would mean that they make even less. <laughs> um, yeah. Also the dog got an entrepreneurial score of one. So is one high or low? I don't know. I think it's, I think it's low. I think it's low. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. All right. What do you want to talk about next? Orbs. So this article was Goodness. stupid. Don't click on it. Don't go to it. Let this be the only interaction you had with it. Um, okay. What are we... Yeah, what are we talking about? There's so many things. Done that. Done that. Done that. Duh. 
Um, done that. I was accidentally trendy. Do you want to talk about that? No. Okay. I mean, I okay, sure, we can. It was mostly that I... <laughs> <laughs> sorry oh jasco 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 no nope. oh, yeah you don't talk... get to talk about it we're talking about jasco all right let's talk about jasco yeah no you go though because this is your thing oh uh smart home electronics manufacturer jasco is following through on their promise to improve the availability of firmware updates to their family of products this is something that i complained about previously on the wan show and to jasco's credit they have done as far as i can tell a 180 on their previous policy of not providing firmware updates Which to end great. users to now they are not only doing that but they are actually they have actually worked with home assistant to provide updates to jasco products automatically through home assistant over the air updates how cool is that extremely cool and they deserve credit and kudos for it this this is the type of stuff that we want to see from companies so when they do it we like very good job and they're doing it even once we've taken the heat out from under them yes they're not just saying we're going to do it and then going, oh, okay, a lot of the fuss around this has died down. We can probably just Everyone's not do forgotten. This. Let's just keep going. Yeah. They're not just waiting out the news cycle. So it's important to bring them back up. Talk about how, to be clear, the, my, my light switches are still not perfect. But you got to give credit where it's due. Absolutely. And darn it, they are improving their supported products in the mean. Are they improving the support for their products in the meantime. So I love it. They, at this point, we feel have gone beyond the industry standard. So, so kudos, kudos to that. Um, I don't really need to do a ton of discussion here. Let's, uh, let's talk about, let's talk about I was accidentally trendy. I came across this article in Financial Times that declares giant tacky logos plastered on everything to be on the way out. They're on the way out. Luxury logos. Okay. Like this. They're on the way out, Luke. Um, amid a, I genuinely would have no idea. Cost of living crisis, and uh, it seems oh, I absurd. Mean, that makes sense. Oh man, let me read this article on mobile. Oh, I have to fill out a survey. Um, okay, no. Uh, next. Okay, that was the whole. That was the whole survey. Logo mania is over, and I. I don't know. This was just kind of validating for me because starting with the stealth hoodie, we have taken away more and more and more and more and more of the obvious branding on our products. Like, you've got an old version of the water bottle. Stealth. Oh, crap. I have an old version of the water bottle, too. So the old one, even the stealthy one, has a giant Linus Tech Tips across it. The new one, just where the CMOS battery is, just has a little LTT logo. It's oh, like basically, yeah, it's hidden on the product. Um, and a lot of our stuff is like that. I now, think that's really good with stealthier personally. and stealthier logos because you already paid for the product. I mean, I, if you want to rep, if you want to rep the brand, by all means, but you should have options for people who don't. I've always supported that. Um, you probably remember conversations where I used to talk about like the quality of Pax merch. That used to be a very major thing in my life. Yes, it was because it was the only thing you wore. Yes, yeah. yes, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so it was really nice when the shirt wasn't just a company logo. Um, and, and it was cool because actually people would ask you about the stuff more. So like if, 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 if you're the brand and you want that representation, you're actually getting kind of like more of it in my opinion, in a way, because I, I've never seen someone's logo on a shirt and been like, oh, cool. I should buy that. But I've seen an interesting looking shirt that I know is like at least somewhat related to the thing. And I've asked people about it and that has maybe driven me in that direction. To be clear, this wasn't intentional. This wasn't me trying to be trendy. I traditionally have spent very little time brain noodling about fashion trends. I think um, Informic probably was. You cared about it. You wanted less logos. You thought it looked better. Well, yeah, but that's not... I will still feel that way in five years when the fashion industry has big tacky logos on things again. Like, it's the it's the cyclical nature of it that I don't... Yeah, I mean, I, we've I, always been I, I can't against, keep up with. We've been against that. I well. just... I just I just like the things I like, yeah. and every once in a while, the things I like happen to be in fashion and <laughs> yeah, readily available, <laughs> and so I stock up. <laughs> um, so anyway, the reason I clicked this article even in the first place, though, is I kind of run a clothing store now, so I was I was just sort of curious. Um, however, this was the reason that I ultimately decided to make this a topic on the show. It wasn't the I was accidentally trendy part. That was just okay. that was just a good title for the segment. Sure. It was the part where the author kind of lost me when 
Um, they said their favorite brand is Bottega Veneta. I've which never heard of this. I had never heard of. So never having heard of it, I went over to their site for some window shopping laughing. Uh, this was one of my favorite hobbies when I used to travel a lot is I would be in airports where they often have super upscale stores. And I would play the game of going into the first store that I find that I completely don't recognize the name of at all. And then asking how much things cost. <laughs> okay, hold on. You probably... No. You haven't even found my favorite part yet. It's a $7,000 shirt. How is it not the worst part? Uh, no, 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 no. I didn't say the worst part. No, I said you haven't okay. part, have found the part right. that I found. Okay, okay. we can, we can look okay. at yours. Sorry, which shirt is $7,000? So the left tank top, which looks like the most boring normal tank top ever, is $610. Uh-huh. And the right pinstriped shirt, which looks like something you could, and probably in this case should, just get from Goodwill, is apparently... Seven thousand dollars. They had to add the ninety. I love how both these things like it can't just be six hundred bucks. It needs to be six hundred and ten. Yeah. It can't just be seven thousand dollars. It needs to be seven thousand and ninety. There's a bomb cost here. We need to get our cost materials back. Well, they do. They do. It's important. Yeah. Um. Oh. Okay. So hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Out of curiosity, I <laughs> I clicked the uh what is it winter winter twenty twenty two looks okay. Um, so they've got like this runway thing and I came across this gem. Hold on a second. You'll probably have to watch over there. I came across this gem. Oh, the like Neo? The thing the guy's carrying. Oh. Okay. Okay. So hold on. Let's freeze on that. So the garbage bag. <laughs> okay. Just a second. So if Is we go like down, $6, we can see all the looks. Okay. So I was curious actually about the jacket when I scrolled down here. It was, it was the jacket that, that got me to, to come look at it. But it turns out that only the bag and the shoes are, are their thing. Okay. So I, so I clicked this bag. I was like, okay, what's the deal with this bag? How much is it? I can't even. This is a 2000 or 2650 Canadian dollar oh, garbage bag. bag. That does not have a hidden strap. It does. It it actually does not. It doesn't have hidden. It's like, really big for not having a hidden backpack strap. straps. You actually hold it like this. <laughs> she looks like she is holding on to this thing for dear life. <laughs> he looks like he's going to a slumber party. <laughs> it looks like he's wearing slippers and holding a pillow. <laughs> To be clear, I know the like massively oversized shoes are like a thing. To be of. clear, I am not blaming the models here. I think they're probably doing a great job of doing what they are supposed to be doing in that industry. Um, Someone in Floatplane chat said seven thousand dollars. They're talking about that shirt that I found. Yeah, seven thousand dollars covers the cost of the French. Um, uh taylor airline ticket of the french taylor the worst part is i literally don't know if they're joking or not because so it's making me feel pretty good Hank, about the ltt oh, backpack i think i just skipped a beat because you're talking about this stupid garbage bag oh no and then you reach down and you go to lift something up and at first all i see is that you're holding something that's oh no like oh. look the thing is thank goodness i have no problem with premium products, but they better have a reason for it. Yeah. They better have better something. And a bag that I have to carry. It looks like like Ron Weasley or something. Like I'm getting like a <laughs> Yeah. That's crazy. I look how uncomfortable this looks for her to hold. Yeah. And it probably doesn't even have anything in it yet. Oh <laughs> That's just wild. I Oh man. I love it. Buy it for research purposes. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So anyway, no. according to this particular writer, big logos are out, but according to this particular writer, Bottega Veneta is like a thing that should exist. So I don't know. We'll see. This is clearly an industry that I just do not do not understand. And I can tell you, we have done some experimentation with like really high end materials. Like we'd love to do like a more luxury version of some of our products, but this is this is not reflective 
of the mm-hmm. difference in cost. No, yeah, and and like our, if we do a luxury materials version of a product, it will cost more because they do. Um, but this is not reflective. Yeah. I will say that much. Yeah. Um, the funny thing about this is I, I have actually read, um, read up about like fashion, like designer brand, like premium brand, luxury brand uh, marketing. And a big part of it is the price being high. Like that's actually a good thing for the kinds of, of shoppers who follow this scene, who care about this scene. The more ex- The more outlandishly expensive it is, the more of a statement it is that you don't give any f**ks and you can just throw money at a fancy pillow-shaped garbage bag. Like, that's the point. It's a feature, not a bug. And I think to to most people, it's just kind of mind-blowing. Yeah. $7,000 luxury LTT backpack, except they remove the straps. You just have to carry it with... Yeah, it's, it improves grip strength by 60% in just three weeks. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh no. That'd be funny. Yeah. Do we have any other topics? I don't know. I mean, know. we do. We but do. Should we? I don't know. I'll tell you what. I'll let you do it. No. I don't, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it either. Oh. This one? Which one? <laughs> this one? Yeah, we could do that one. I don't want to do that. Oh, well, I can do that. You can do the other one. What's the other one? I'll do that one if you'll do the other one. No, quick agree before you look at the other one. <laughs> oh, I don't want to do that one either. <laughs> Bell, give us a couple merch messages while we work up the noise over here. <laughs> First question here is from Mars. Are y'all still playing any Steam Deck or any other Windows handhelds? And if so, what games? I finally started Witcher 3. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I am not that far into it yet because I've been really busy with house stuff. I want this. Sense. I want the place. I want basically. I here. I'm instead of trying to use words, I'm it's gonna improved. just. I'm gonna go like this. I want it to feel. <sighs> then I can play video games. Yeah, yeah. I'm just. I haven't. I've played almost Probably no games. Not quite lately. there yet. Yeah, it's yeah. not. It's not there yet. Yeah. It's getting there though, right? It is. It's getting pretty it's, good. It, it is. Yeah. Okay, I have a pool update. Oh. Six weeks. What? Till usable? I mean, I don't believe it, but yeah, that's what they say. It's still fun to hear. Yeah. Anytime you so, hear any estimated date for anything being done, it's just wrong. Just double it. <laughs> if it is actually done on October the twenty first, that's potentially still usable to a degree. You want to go? You want to go for a swim with me? I'm down. All right. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. do it. Yeah. Let's do it. We skinny dipping. <laughs> Don't know about that. He didn't say no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, convince Linus to play Morrowind on the Steam Deck? I no. don't think so. He couldn't convince me to play Morrowind on a keyboard and mouse. I don't think I tried. I, I tried to play it. It's a hard game to go back to. Yeah, you, you told me it was great, and I was like, I'll give it a shot because I loved Oblivion. And it was rough. It's a hard game to yeah, go back like to. Yeah, it was like not fun. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have a quest log. Like, yeah. Lots of, it, it doesn't have a lot of like modern niceties and... Uh, things that make it easy to use it's still a, like it's still an old school rpg it's it's rough all right bill hit us next question here is from rohan hello linus and luke what's an activity or experience that you've wanted to try together but haven't yet together. skinny dipping in a pool <laughs> i mean let's do it i uh i <laughs> now i'm the prude he invited me to the naked steam room on our japan trip and i didn't go that was a good experience, actually. I hung out with uh, one of the engineers from Omron, and it was like so awkward at first, but he clearly didn't feel awkward about it at all. And eventually, that like him being very clear about like, dude, this is just normal, everything's fine. I'm talking to you about like random engineering stuff. Eventually, I like kind of got it, and then I stopped caring. And it was it was yeah, it just you stop that part is irrelevant eventually. Yeah, and you just enjoy the the warm water and hanging out. Yep. Literally. <laughs> Hang in now. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. We kind of like, we've done a lot of stuff together. Yeah. Um, there's stuff I'd be stoked to, but yeah, I don't like, think I there's anything. I want to skydiving, but it's like. I was actually going to say skydiving as well. But, yeah, it'd be fun to go together, but like. But I, yeah. Yeah. I think we're saying the same thing. Yeah. 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 Next question here is from Nathan. 
I really want an OLED gaming monitor, but I'd like to stay around 27 inches. It seems like everything OLED is much bigger unless yep. it's a phone or a tablet, which is much smaller. Is there a reason why? Okay, so my understanding is the way the mother glass works for, um, for, for panel production is there's certain sizes of mother glass. That's how you get bigger and bigger TVs is they make larger and larger mother glass. And at each size, there's an optimal sub-size that you can cut out of it um, to maximize the yields of completed displays. And OLED, because the producers of them are focused on either handheld devices or on large format TVs, are simply not producing mother glass that is yielding well enough for those sizes to be economically viable. That is, that is my understanding of where we're at. They are getting smaller. The 42-inch LG C2 and the uh, monitors that are based on that same panel. We have a video coming out soon. We have two videos coming out soon, actually. We have two videos pending release of me upgrading my monitor. <laughs> because I upgraded to the C2, the 42-inch mm. one, because the 48 was just a little big for gaming for me. And then immediately I came back to the office for WAN show, like the day I had shot the upgrade. And I was like, the Asus version of this. It's a proper monitor with display oh, port is right there. Yeah, I was with you. No, I want that one. Yeah. So there will be a second video <laughs> where I change over to the Asus one, which has a matte display, display port. Uh, it's more big. It's more computer monitor optimized. Like it has a, a fixed brightness mode that you can put it in. So it doesn't dynamically play around with the brightness. <sighs> um, anyway, but the point is that they're at 42 inches now. And I think we'll continue to see that go down. I was muted. Classic me. <laughs> I own a Steam Deck and I want to emulate Zelda Breath of the Wild on it, but That's I don't know how to make really a, a ROM for it. <laughs> One of these days I'll find out how to word it so you can't do that. But yeah. I don't know how to make a ROM for it. If someone I know gives me a copy of the ROM, is it piracy even though we both own the game physically? That is a wonderful question. The answer is yes. Yeah. Is that stupid? Also yes. Yep. You, in order to not pirate according to the the law, um, you must, you must, you must rip the file yourself. Now, with that said, personally, I stopped bothering to rip my Blu-rays a long time ago because someone else can spend their time doing that. And as long as I have a physical media backup for my for my digital copies of things that I own. Ethically, I see no problem. But legally, which is not necessarily the same thing as ethically, legally, you would be in the wrong. Sorry, did I say piracy? I meant privateering. Next question here is from Zane. Have you used your LTT backpack when riding your bike? And if so, what's your experience using it? I'm considering getting it for riding myself as 50% of my current bag is taken up by my sneakers. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I've, I've used it on the bike. It's, I mean, obviously something that I do. I ride a motorcycle, so it was something that um, as, we were, as we were tweaking the, like, the strap spacing and the strap design, it was something that I would like, notice if it didn't work with motorcycle gear or whatever else. I, I find it quite comfortable. With that said, you know, we don't make any claims of like perfect waterproofness or anything like that. So if your intention is to ride around in the rain, you will still need a rain cover for it. But in terms of utility, no problems. Question here from Connor. How do the both of you maintain a healthy relationship all these years working together? I mean, L word, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Like the important one, Linus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's all me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, Luke and I have been, once you've been through this much together, I you feel just strongly the same way. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know if this is a controversial take or not. I think, in my opinion, a lot of things in life need challenge and difficulty to become strong. Almost whatever that thing is. Yeah. We went through a ton of crap, especially early on. Yeah. And when you do that and you get through the other side. And we've been imperfect to each other at many times. Totally. You're going to be. Yeah. It's going to happen. If you do that and you get through the other side, I feel like you're either going to be yeah. like 
linked together or completely apart forever. Yeah. One of the two. And you figure it out. Yeah. I I think that's just, I don't know. Maybe we had times when we were both so dependent on each other that we didn't really have a choice. And then I, I guess you just, you know, you're, you're forged in that, um, in that fire. Yeah. I, uh, I, I just, I, I just don't think there's, I, I have a hard time imagining anything that could come between us at this point that be would be, tough. that would be enough to, to really break things down. It's been particularly funny watching some of the speculation about how uncomfortable you are around me or how you're afraid to tell me what you think or whatever else. Uh, some, some, some expert body language analysis of who on the WAN show. Like, There's been some interesting stuff. You do you. Um, <laughs> bravo. It's entertaining reading, but uh, it's like the Forbes article. It's reading. So I was talking to you about that. Wasn't yeah. I reading the Luke science was, was entertaining. I was like, Oh wow. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know that. That's cool. There was also, there was one, there's a bunch of people pointing out one specific scene where they're like, oh, he rolled his eyes here so hard. I didn't roll my eyes. Oh, really? I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't I be was, surprised if you okay. did. <laughs> so I, I have, yeah, so, and I've done it before. I'm I not mean, if he's, I didn't then. if he's afraid to like, to offend me, then rolling his eyes on camera when I'm going to be <laughs> able to see him do it, probably a bad strat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a problem right now. I've talked about it on my show before where I look down too much. I, my angle gets a little brutal because yeah. the desk for me is a little low and the laptops are pretty short. So I end up looking like this and I'm supposed to be close to the mic. So I end up looking like this all the time Yeah, and you can't really see my eyes. So I've been trying to work on that. I think this show is a little bit better, but it's still a problem. I'm often interacting with flow plane chat. So I have a bit of an excuse, yeah. um, but I was looking down and then I wanted to quickly think about a response that would be really good. Yeah. So I looked up. <laughs> and then I looked at you. I didn't actually, my eyes didn't do the whoant. They went, huh, uh. there are other parts of that video where I rolled my eyes. Oh, I believe it. But that the one that people pointed Look, out wasn't even it. <laughs> if he was going to roll his eyes, he would do it to my face. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that might be part of it as well, actually. We've both um, always been pretty open and blunt about stuff. Yes. So we always know where each other stand. Yeah. <laughs> and that's been good yeah i think it's, maybe uncomfortable at times yeah but worth maybe it. people haven't maybe people haven't seen it in a bit because i think we've also kind of mind melded a little yes. over the years we used to disagree a lot more yeah and now we i think there's there's a long period of wan show where we would basically just be like yeah bro good take bro <laughs> yeah, you too yeah. bro <laughs> We played too much bro force. Yeah, maybe they just haven't seen us like disagree hard in, in a while in or a something. Long time. Ooh, yeah. mommy and daddy are fighting. I don't know how to deal with this. Um, JK33V3RS asks, are you at the level of fame where there is WAN fan fiction? We had My fan brother in Christ, let ago. me tell you. <laughs> don't you have a... I have two Luke and Linus furry art paintings yeah. uh, that I, I got for free from here. Let me let me put that out there. Okay, there's so many things wrong with but this so two. far. There's the existence of them. There's the fact that you need them. And there's the fact that they came from here. <laughs> so every part of it. <laughs> yes, every all of that. Yeah, I find it hilarious. I I have no problem with if it. If I personally. had one, it would be weird. If um, I had just one, it would be very, very weird. So I have two. Um, no, you're going to actually need to explain this more. <laughs> so we have a giveaway pile where stuff goes to disappear <laughs> and one day i went and looked and there's a bunch of art like there was stuff from h3 h3 there was pictures of steve brule from uh like a uh, john c Riley for some reason and then there were these two paintings of luke and linus they're pretty like they're decent like it's painted really well and it's like are, luke are they like hand painted you can actually see them on float so. plane in uh, a video that you made that is actually one of my favorite like <laughs> full right. exclusive videos where he goes on this big road trip to pick up a monitor. Yeah, yeah I know the one. It's it's in kind of the yeah, beginning of Yeah, I say goodbye that. to the paintings. Yeah. I'm like, goodbye to Luke and Linus and goodbye to Luke and Linus again. This is why I know, yeah. Yeah, I need people to realize that I don't just have furry art of my CEO <laughs> on my wall. Oh, I do remember this. It was so good. It's actually Wait, like you have two of the same one? Well, of course. Okay, that's weird. I thought you meant two different ones. That is weird. <laughs> Why would you need two of the same oh, they're one? They're on different backgrounds, too. So I have. I love that you're a bear. 
It's a bear and a wolf I mean, combined. That probably makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said I love that you're a bear. Why am I a goat, though? I mean, okay, I guess. Grace of all time. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Beautiful. That's amazing. Um, so funny. So, yeah, I don't so know. They were in the giveaway pile and you got give away to them. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. To be clear, um, if you were the one who sent that, it's not that I didn't think it was super cool. It's just I had no idea what to do with it. And I wanted someone to have it and cherish it. And apparently that someone is going to be Bell. And, and a warning, if you Bell. look them up, like if you go to the video and see their username, they make very good art, but it is very not safe for work. So just be aware of that <laughs> if you are looking at this artist. That makes sense. I never would have assumed that a like furry artist would have not safe for work content on, on their timeline. There's big line. money in that. Really? Like big money in that. Really? Yeah. Like we should invest big money in that. I mean, what? if you could, it would probably be a profitable investment if you found like a really good artist or whatever. What do you mean? But how do you invest in artists? I don't artists? know. I don't, don't they think just, that's like, a thing. They just like do the art and yeah, then, then make the money? Make like... lots of money. Yeah. Oh, I have a friend okay. who's an artist and they don't do that type of stuff and they get commissioned for it all the time and like big money, but they don't do it. So like they have to turn down like big money all the time where do people put it if you're me it's in your streaming room (laughs) okay but like that's not i've seen some x-rated furry artwork i i i don't think it's twitch terms of service safe so like okay Next, next answer then. Store it on your computer. I think a lot of it's digital. Oh, oh, di- di- oh. Okay, I thought we were talking like big wall prints. Oh, I like mean, what I, Bell I don't know. That might also be a. Th- I don't know like a lot about it, but I, I just know there's big money there. Okay, Gremlin Injector says you commission stuff you think is cool and hang it around your house instead of prints from Comic Con. I mean, yeah, fair enough. But like, there, I just, there, I don't know. There's someone in full plane chat who. Foxina Box. The name makes me think this is probably true. They say furry here with more than more than one fox in a box. Fox. Not Foxina Box, but that, it could be both. That makes sense. I mean, there's it no could, capital. Could I, be a double entendre. And there's a capital B. Okay. Um, furry here with more than one one thousand dollar piece of art. Okay. Where do you put it though? I think it's digital. Digital. And that's that's money. Huh. That's money, money. There's big money in this. It's crazy. It's very interesting to me. Modern modern professions, man. There's like a lot of it that people have just like never heard of that are like very serious, like big business stuff. It's really interesting. A lot of this is digital stuff. You don't need a storefront, right? So like if you're not looking for it, you might just not know it exists, but it's like it's a big thing. I mean, yeah, digital, digital only. only. Okay. I mean, to be clear, to be clear, it's not like as a kid we wouldn't occasionally go to an acquaintance of my dad's house where they would have like actual pornography just like on the wall it's common in people's like garages and shops back in the day I yeah i guess so so yeah. i mean okay i guess in terms of being a, a norm at least for some people it's it's not new then uh, i've just I, I personally i have never been tempted to um have anything other than like g-rated things hanging up in my house oh yeah then, me neither I have small children, which I don't know. Maybe from some people's point of view, doesn't matter. I, I just, I just don't. I just don't really get it. All right, hit us with another one. Question here from John: When traveling, what kind of tech do you take with you? Oh, a mountain of battery banks. It's more what I take out. I just take yeah. out anything that's going to get confiscated at the airport. So take yeah. out my screwdriver. Take out my other screwdrivers and like my like my toolkits and stuff. Um, I actually have like an away luggage that's pre-packed for two nights. So I literally, I yeah, yeah, I'll just, I'll grab my backpack, which is going to have like a hoodie. That's really important. It'll have my laptop, my charger, a battery bank or two. Um, it'll have like my business card holder, which I only carry around just, I don't know, ceremonially at this point. I don't even think it has any cards in it. Um, mouse, mouse pad for using my computer, uh, sunglasses, 
uh, uh, I'll, oh, I'll take a portable gaming device. So it used to be the Switch back when I traveled. Nowadays, I would take an Ioneo or a Steam Deck or something like that. And then for my bag, I actually pack super light. I'll take I'll take a ratio of one pair of pants for every three days I'm going to be there, um, accepting things like uh, like exercise pants. Like I would take one of those for every yeah, time yeah, yeah. I intend to go out and exercise. Yeah, obviously, yeah. you're talking basically jeans when you're saying yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, like jeans. And then I take one shirt, one underwear um, for every day. And then I would take actually typically I'll only take one pair of socks for every two days. Oh, I, yeah, I know. I know. I do a different thing on that. Sandals. My socks don't get stinky. Oh, that's interesting. I I would bring one pair of socks for every day plus one pair per week. Plus a pair per week because you'll do multiple pairs of socks sometimes. Depends on the Got situation. It. But like I would often do like adventures along with the traveling. Right. If yep. I have some time off. To go hiking. If I get like... my socks wet. Yep. You don't want to be hanging around in wet socks like i don't know it's just it's not good yep that makes sense sour bones says how do you reckon riding a motorcycle when it's so dangerous while having three young kids um you know i'm a defensive driver i um you know obviously yeah bad things can happen but i i enjoy it i'm not going to stop living my life because i have dependence you can boil that statement down to a pretty huge amount of things and just stop living yeah how do you how do you leave the house when it's so dangerous um driving at all is super dangerous yep so i yeah i don't know i just that's it's it's above my threshold and my wife somehow lets me do it so i'm going for it kiboski sorry uh yeah in, in a sec bell uh says this is on float plane chat Pack as if you're going to sh your pants every day. <laughs> okay, not everybody <laughs> lives by that rule. Bring some extra stuff I think is a decent idea, though, especially if you're going to go off the beaten path at all because you never really know what's going to happen. Okay. Um, yeah, all right. Yeah. I can stand by that motto, by the way. I'm okay. the exact same thing. All so right. nervous. What if? Yeah. You know, what if you do poop I your like pants every day? Ex- I like having excessive battery banks, um, enough clothes that I can get around comfortably. Um, so usually I bring extra underwear, extra socks, because those are the things that like get wonky. Um, and extra ways to have water, basically. Make sure I got a water bottle. Question here from Tarl. Luke, first of all, it's called Halo Infinite because the rollout is infinitely long. They got him. <laughs> Boom, roasted. Linus, question for you. <laughs> Why did you go with standard standardized workstations instead of using virtual machines? Because work, virtual machines just Ugh. can be weird and buggy and sometimes especially with uh, like product licensing, uh there are there are lots of products that will uh spit out errors in, on virtual machines. They just, they just don't like it. And sometimes it's just as simple as they want you to buy the much much more expensive version of their license that is built for like, virtual machines like, or no. whatever else. Yeah stupid forget it oh you're doing this hmm we know you're an enterprise exactly time to pay more last question here is from bad bones love watching the wan show did no, you guys have no, to do see... it right the username is bad bones 69 nice <laughs> very nice <laughs> <laughs> did you guys happen to see that valve has just announced they've opened steam deck repair centers for decks that have damp that have been damaged even under have been damage covered under warranty but I believe you do have to pay for damage. But there is a new repair center thing covered and partnered with iFixit. I did not see that. That's super cool, though. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, for the vast majority of people, it's probably not that helpful unless they're everywhere. But if there's a way for independent shops to apply and become one of these, then that's super cool. This is the first I'm hearing of it, though. So I, I we don't have a lot of other information. Yeah, I won't have like a big take on this. Um, all right. The last thing, I guess. Um, Oh. Queen Elizabeth II has passed. Um, I had some people call me out for being, and this, I quote, disrespectful for my comments on the live stream yesterday. Uh, the simple truth of the matter is that the royal family means as little to me as any other random stranger. Um, also, she was 96 years old. It wasn't exactly like a moment that shocked the world, like uh, the recent assassination of Shinzo Abe, uh, with that like DIY scattergun thing. Um, and nobody expected me to comment on that, but I guess because he wasn't the ceremonial king of Canada, um, 
I, I no, nobody wants me to say anything. Like to me, it just it, it doesn't have a ton of meaning. And I've had some people correct me and say, um, actually, the monarchy has a lot to do with Canada. OK, so the way it works is, yes, uh, functionally, the monarchy does play a role in our government. But if they ever actually tried to overstep their purely ceremonial role, there are mechanisms whereby we could just say, um, actually not that and cut them off. So functionally, they serve no role whatsoever. Uh, I also personally believe that the concept of a monarchy is dreadfully outdated. And you can you can quote me on that. Uh, why should someone be born to be the ruler of some geographical plot of land any more than someone should be born to be a lawyer or born to be a plumber or a fisher or whatever? Um, I believe that our goal as a functioning society should be to do everything in our power to improve social mobility. And perpetuating this idea of nobility and noble birth is entirely counterproductive to that goal. Um, obviously, it is sad that someone's mother and someone's grandmother died. And it seems like she was kind of badass, like during World War II and stuff. And she did some stuff that was pretty cool. Um, so like, yeah, for the people who were close to her, that sucks. It's a bummer. But the truth is, I'm just not going to put on some theatrical grieving performance. She wasn't my grandma or Luke's grandma or the grandma of nope. anybody that I know. Uh, with all of that said, where I was clearly a little bit tone deaf was that uh, this seems now, I, I realize this is an emotionally charged issue for many people. It wasn't my intention to disrespect you guys, the many Britons and other people for whom she represented something more than a fancy lady with a cool shiny hat. Uh, right. that, was, that was not my intention at all. Um, but I hope you will also take a moment to understand my perspective, which is that she is just a person, a human like anyone else. And that's, that's it. I didn't know her. I know practically nothing about any of this. Um, just to echo Linus's thing, I guess. Uh, if you want to hear a cool story, look up, uh, Queen Elizabeth II driving, uh, Prince. It's an interesting story. Cool. Yeah. And I think that's it for the show today. Okay. That's all. Thanks for watching. We will see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye. Also, I did say it next week. It just got cut off. Last the... week, you mean. Did I say next week? You did. Well, I'm going to say it next week, too. Now I'm going to try and cut them off. I already did. No, but like next week. Oh. So I should wait a little while for the stream to catch up. Yeah, just like a few seconds. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll just watch it. I'll just watch it, and then I'll cut it at exactly the right moment. It'll be great. It'll be grand. Here we go. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. Sponsor one. Sponsor two.